NFL's final playoff spot. For Miami, the division title was secured long ago, but they desperately want the AFC's home field advantage. A win will assure the Dolphins they will not be faced with a January road game at Denver. NFL and team records galore are on the line for the Dolphins tonight, and heading that assault will be second-year quarterback Dan Marino. The youngster with the golden arm is changing the standards for judging NFL quarterbacks. He already has shattered the single-season record for touchdowns with an incredible 44. The NFL record book could become his personal biography. Marino doesn't work alone. There are the two marks, Duper and Clayton, each over 1,200 yards and 23 touchdowns between them. Marino's counterpart tonight, Danny White. He lost his job at the start of the season, but he's back tonight as the Cowboys are faced with one final opportunity. They know they'll need big moments from White, Tony Dorsett, the revitalized defense, and big play receiver Tony Hill if they are to upset Miami. It began on Labor Day weekend, this 1984 regular season. It ends tonight in the Orange Bowl in Miami with so much on the line. Everyone, I'm Frank Gifford, and welcome to a supercharged on Orange Bowl. So much on the line tonight. The Dallas Cowboys down to their last chance. They've been to the playoffs nine consecutive years in a row, and this is it for them. If they don't win tonight, they don't go. Miami, they desperately want that home field advantage. They don't even like to think about going to Denver for a January game. And, of course, other players involved. There are 49 New York Giants, you know, looking on tonight because should Miami defeat Dallas tonight, then the Giants will be the final wild card choice in the NFL playoffs. And, of course, the coaches. How are they affected? Well, we have two of the greatest here. Don Meredith talked earlier with his former head coach, Tom Landry, the second winningest coach of all time. And O.J. talked with Don Shula, the third winningest coach of all time. Coach, there's been a lot of skepticism that a team that has already clinched its spot in the playoffs can come out and play maximum ball. If that's so, what can a coach do to have his team come out and play? Well, I've just tried to point out how important this ball game is to us for a couple of reasons. We still have the possibility of having the home field for the AFC championship game, and we want to do everything that we can to get that rather than travel to Denver if they're the team that's in it at the end. Uh, of course, uh, I realize that uh, the Raiders had a little bit of a tough time doing that against Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh played a great ball game and deserved to be in the playoffs by their great win over uh, L.A. But our football team also has to play better. I got to feel better about our team. Our defense has to feel better about the way that they're playing. And uh, we've been struggling some of late, and we want to get back to that good feeling of playing well in all departments. Must situation for the Cowboys to make the playoff. That's an unusual situation. It's unusual for me to be here on the 50-yard line, but I'm here with the coach, so that's why I'm here. Coach, I got a feeling you you like these kind of games that you got to win them. Well, we really do. We have to win this one if we're going to go any further. We're going home and have Christmas and watch everybody else play. So uh, it's a big one for us, and we hope that we play very well. I'm sure you will. I'm also sure you're prepared, and I would, I would imagine that looking over your game plans, you say, hey, this particular unit I'm really proud of. This particular unit I may be a little bit more concerned with. Which one are you proud of, and which one are you most concerned with? Well, we've been a great team. Uh, this year together doing our job but we know that our defense has carried us a lot during the season and, and this is one that's been doing the best job for us and offense we're worried about it because we know that Miami is going to score a lot of points because of their average and so some way we have to get enough points or we have to slow them down one or the other so unlucky to be behind at the end of the game right that really is uh -huh. good luck to you coach the man who has had a season he'll never forget, Danny White. Waited so many years to take over from Roger Staubach. Got that job at the beginning of the year. He was replaced, but he's back in the saddle once again. And Dan Marino, what can you say about this young man? He has handled everything so beautifully. On the verge of so many records, we'll be talking about him throughout the entire evening. Dallas has won first tonight. They have won the toss, and they have elected, of course, to receive. Dropping deep, Gary Allen and Chuck McSwain. And set to kick off, Uwe Von Schaman. Allen, 31, McSwain, 35. And for just a brief moment, before we came on the air, this Orange Bowl was eerily silent. They love this Dolphin football team. It won't be silent all night. Oh, it'll be loud. We're underway from the Orange Bowl in Miami, the Cowboys and the Dolphins, and Von Schaumann with a prevailing wind blowing from the open end of the end zone, carries it into the end zone, touchback, and Danny White will lead the offensive unit out. Those are his numbers. He did not play in the first five games, replaced an injured Gary Hogaboom, and pulled out a New Orleans game eight weeks ago, started the next week, and beat Indianapolis. Injured his shoulder in the Giants game six weeks ago. He missed the next two starts, and then he has been the starter since the loss to Buffalo three weeks ago. 
There is the offensive line. None of those offensive linemen will be in the Pro Bowl. That is highly unusual for the Cowboys. First and 10 near the 20-yard line. Tony Dorsett, single setback. Over 1,100 yards on the season. He'll try it first on the left side. And he skips out over the 25-yard line to the 26 for a gain of about six. It'll be second down and four as we look at the defense. The question mark, Bob Baumauer in the middle. Very sore ankle. The linebackers, we weren't all together sure that Charles Bowser on the outside could go. We'll probably see a lot of Ernie Roan tonight. Don McNeil, healthy once again after missing all of last year, most of this year. He's over in the left corner for the Dolphins. He's an added plus. Second down and four. We'll see a lot of wide receivers. Number 82, Mike Winfro. Number 83, Doug Donnelly. They will alternate much of the evening. And, of course, Timmy Newsom, the starting fullback as of three weeks ago. He wears number 30. He'll be in there with Dorsett. On second and four, Tony Hill. Dallas first down out of the 35 to the 37-yard line. And, Don, if they are going to get the big play, Dallas, they are going to look to this man. They really they should, and they will, I think. Frank, you're going to see that. Dallas, I think, kind of pull out all the stops. It's pretty easy to say that. That's a pattern that's been in their offense for a number of years, but you're going to see them throw in so many different sets. They feel that both offensively and defensively, what they've really got to do is mix it up, throw everything at them, and go for it. Miami rated 13th in the AFC against the run, 5th against the pass. Their defense has shown many signs of weaknesses over the past few weeks. On first and ten, Danny White back. Fires behind Tony Dorsett. Uh, incomplete. It'll be second down and ten. Pressure is coming from Kim Bocamper. OJ, your thoughts on what this young man must do? I feel Tony must have a good game today. As you know, they want to have ball control. They want to keep this Miami high-powered offense off the football field. And normally, if Tony has a good day, the Cowboys win. His, his longest run from scrimmage, hard to believe, 31 yards for Tony Dorsett. He's had only two 100-yard games against Philadelphia and Indianapolis. The Cowboys have changed that offensive line almost weekly because of injuries. Second down and 10. Dorsett follows Newsom over the left side, and he's out over the 40-yard line. He'll get about three. It'll be third down and seven long yardage passing down for Danny White coming up thing that we saw on that past play before we were talking about Joe Montana Montana. throwing that one so well a week ago or like it seemed like we go Friday that ball was just thrown behind and had Tony been able to catch that one he would have picked up a good five or six yards the receivers for Dallas the tight end Doug Cosby is the leading receiver that's strange Dallas has never had a leading receiver that's been a tight end Tony Hill has 52 Doug Cosby has 55 from the shotgun White has the time, overthrows his intended receiver out of the backfield, Newsom. And Dallas will punt, and the partisan crowd that will make a tremendous amount of noise tonight, already being heard from. Danny White stays on to do the punting. Bolton Walker will drop for Miami. Fine return man. Remember him in the Super Bowl a couple of years ago, setting Super Bowl records for kickoff returns. Danny White averaging a little over 38 yards. Cowboys lead the league in having the punt. Dallas would really like to keep that ball in this first quarter going that way. The wind's going to be in Miami's favor. Kicking into the wind. Good kick. Good kick by Danny White into a strong win. Bolton Walker had to make the fair catch, and that was a tremendous boot by Danny White into that gale. Carried inside the 15-yard line and forced the fair catch by Bolton Walker. Moments from the Orange Bowl. Miami, their first possession, the ball inside their 15-yard line. Sellout crowd of 75,000-plus on hand tonight. Tony Nathan, very versatile single setback now for the Dolphins. And, of course, the great Dan Marino at quarterback. Hardy in motion. And Marino gets a shot off, and it's oh. complete. It goes to Mark Duper, but Marino was really popped. And what Don mentioned before, you get the feeling the Cowboys are going to come with all kinds of blitzes. But Duper gets the first down out near the 40-yard line. They're going to throw everything, but that's just the, that puts the pressure on these guys back in the backside because Duper and Clayton are just so good. They've got great hands. You'll notice that most of the time, these guys can look at that hit on, uh, who was that? Is that Hegman? Mike no. Hegman. Yeah, that's Hegman that came through there. First down Miami, 40-yard line. 
Woody Bennett now at setback. The leading rush here for the Dolphins, wearing number 34. They'll try him over the left side. He's upended, sprawls for about three. Second and seven must meet the offense of the Dolphins. So familiar now, this young man, all kinds of records. He's already set a touchdown single season record of 44. We mentioned that 59 yards he needs to break Dan Fouts' NFL record for yards in the season. He can, with 256 yards, go over 5,000. No one has ever done that. There is an offensive line, three pro bowlers in the middle, two pro bowlers and an alternate in Roy Foster, and two pro bowl wide receivers, number 85, Duper, number 83, Mark Clayton, 23 touchdowns between them. They give him a different look there. Second and seven. And they got away run. by Ed Tutal Jones. And he has knocked so many of them away. I think that's 17 or something this year, Frank. That's a career high for him, but they're going for the ball tonight. This is seven him. in the last five games for Ed Jones. And we'll look at the defensive unit. It starts out with a 4-3. We'll probably see a 4-0 now. That means all the linebackers come out. Thurman, Bates, all Britain come in. Smerrick comes in for Dutton. And Bates and Klingscale move up as linebackers. They're hard-hitting defensive backs. Third and seven. Three wide receivers in. Cephalo joins Duper and Clayton. At the 43-yard line, third and seven from the shotgun, Miami. Look at Bates up there in that linebacker position. He's got his... Marino, wide open field. Down. Still looking for the big one. Oh. A little bit of bumping against Matt Moore. No flags. Marino could have perhaps run 15 yards had he so wished. And perhaps Don Shula just as happy he didn't. But we'll see <laughs> Reggie Roby, the punting unit, comes out for the Miami Dolphins. Don Shula, only one losing season in 22 years as a head coach. That is truly remarkable. Funny, the Cowboy realizes that on third down, the Dolphins like to go to Nat Moore, their slot back. They had him covered one-on-one -on -one by Everson Walls, and Everson had excellent position on him on that pass. He was never open. Reggie Roby with a prevailing wind. They put it over in the West Coast. The man can kick. Big second-year man out of Iowa, 6'3", 235. He puts it up high. He'll be going to the Pro Bowl in Hawaii as the punter. That time, just end over end, and he gets a lot out of it. Fair catch called for, executed, Gary Allen, and Dallas will have their second possession. They'll be near their 13-yard line when we return. 45-yard effort by Reggie Roby, high enough to force the fair catch by Gary Allen. Uh, that could explain why he has batted away 48 passes over the past four years, and he just got a key one a few moments ago against Marino. That was his 15th for the season, which is an all-time high for him for one year. The Cowboys, second possession, just out over their 12-yard line, first down and 10. Dorsett drops into the eye behind Timmy Newsom. Newsom, left side, and the big man with the superb moves and speed gets out to the 19-yard line, picking up almost seven yards before he's upended by Bowser. Everybody seems to come in with a kind of a similar philosophy to play Miami. We've talked about these statistics before. They try to run on them because they're way down in the league's standing as, uh, as far as defending against the run, but the reason is they're always so far ahead of everybody. they got to pass. But that doesn't make sense either. I'll tell you why in a minute. All right. The second down and three. Dorsett. Gets a block by Newsom, but closing out there quickly was Bowser to make the stop just about the line of scrimmage. So it will be third and a long two. It's surprising that the Dolphins are so uh, rated so low against stopping the run. They rated 23rd in the league. Uh, when you consider that they're ahead so early in football games, you would think that their opponent would be forced to throw the ball to catch up. It's surprising to find out that they have been unable to stop teams from running. In the last four games, the Dolphins have given up 537 yards to San Diego, over 400 to the Jets, over 400 to the Raiders. So defensively, they're troubled. Third down, short yardage. Danny White is back. Wide open and bobbling the ball and then collecting the ball was Timmy Newsom, a fine receiver, even as bulky as he is. 6'2 and 232 pounds a year ago in an overtime game. He pulled it out with a 52-yard touchdown run that brought that game to overtime. He's good out of that backfield. I thought this was even tipped right here early. But he just, nope. 
There it was bobbled right there. Well, you know, the ball is really waffling down there. There's a lot of wind up here, I guess, since the beginning of the game. It's really blowing around down there. And, of course, Marino, with the stronger arm, will have less problems throwing the ball and cutting the wind. He cuts right through that wind. Dallas, first down, just inside their 28-yard line. Dorsett slipped, regained his balance, and gets over the 30-yard line to the 31, gain of three. It'll bring up second down and seven. That offensive line has changed eight different times for the Cowboys. They have lost their two starting tackles to injury reserve. Howard Richards, Jim Cooper, and where that really impacts on an offensive team is the running game. Not so much the passing game because guards can move to tackles, tackles can move to guards and they can block. But it makes a difference in the running game. That's average man almost five yards of run against the Dolphins. That's not like the old great Bill Onsberger coach Dolphin defenses. Second down, seven. on top and saw the coverage against receiver Mike Renfro was there by William Judson and he dumps it into the ground it'll be third down and long you see a little bit of that on Danny Arms right arm kind of an unusual wrap Frank you got the right terminology for it but he had his arm drained his elbow drained last week after the game it's a little like a it's a synovial sack see there it fills with fluid it there really you is not painful I played one entire year with it. <laughs> yeah, but you were, you were a very tough person. Not right? painful Just until they stick that needle in there. Yeah, <laughs> the needle is much more painful than the damage itself. Third down, seven, no score. Nine minutes remaining in the first quarter from the shotgun. White looking for Hill, overthrows. Defensive coverage by Don McNeil, but again, I think that was just the wind that had the impact on that ball. Danny White is not the strong arm quarterback, not the strong arm at the east of Dan Marino, and it's going to work heavily against him as he moves into the wind. Colton Walker dropping on fourth down. Neither team has been spectacular in their return units on kickoffs or punts this year, but you know this man is dangerous. Danny White, his first punt. He got off a of beauty into that strong wind. This time off the side of his foot and heads up play up front. It was a good play by Clint Blackwood. Wisely saw that he would have to handle the ball. He made the fair catch, did not allow the bounce, and the Dolphins have good field position at their own 37. Bowl in Miami. That's the Dolphins' record. Not bad on Monday night. Not near the ratings, but not bad either. 8.55 remaining in the first quarter. No score. The Dolphins first down and 10. The ball inside their own 37-yard line. The Dolphins a win tonight. They'll have home field advantage throughout the AFC playoffs. The Dallas Cowboys, a loss tonight. They go home and watch the playoffs. Marino back. Good protection. There's great protection. And still, good coverage. Uh -huh. Dickerson picking up the tight end. Bruce Hardy covering him like a blanket. Anthony Dickerson almost like a big safety man. He's 6'2 and 220 pounds and very agile. Very quick. They can use him many ways in coverage. He was a high school All-American half back a few years ago. That's not exactly <laughs> true. Now they're just New being York. nice to him. We love you. players, of course, pulling for Miami to defeat the Cowboys, and then the Giants will be the wild card playoff team. Joe Carter, the rookie from Alabama, a good running back in there for Miami. Here comes Carter. Dexter Clinksville made the contact. Carter slipped loose, but he was covered quickly with the flow. Gain of about a yard, a yard and a half. It'll be third down, long yardage. Those safeties make an awful lot of tackles. Dexter Klinkskill, you saw then come up very quick. Uh, Michael Downs is the leading tackler on the team, but they expect a lot of those guys. The safeties to come up, they play them like linebackers a lot of times. It's somewhat unusual for a safety to lead the team in, team in tackles. Normally, you have a linebacker with that statistic. Yeah. Interestingly enough, though, Lyle Blackwood, the free safety for the Dolphins, is their second leading tackle. John Shula, somebody asked him why, he said, just watch his play. <laughs> Third down, long yardage from the shotgun. Reno with time. This oh. is picked off. 
Picked off by Ron Fellows. Stepped in front of the intended receiver. That was Mark Clayton. And the Cowboys get the first turnover of the game with 7.53 remaining in the first quarter. Rod only Ron the Fellows. 16th interception against this man as Ron Fellows stepped right in front of Clayton. He I'm really did play it too, didn't he? Yeah, I was going to say, I was surprised Marino threw the ball because Ron Fellows has him Look, covered like a blanket here. He He's knows not it. open. Yep, he knew right where it was. He slipped down a little bit, but Ron made a better move that time than did Mark Clayton. Even if he hadn't have slipped, he would have waited for the ball. So Dallas has an opportunity. They have the ball at Miami's 43-yard line. We'll be back. Close took over that cornerback spot this season from Dennis Thurman. Good coverage. You saw it a moment ago. He gets the turnover. And up comes the Cowboys at the 43-yard line. First and 10 of Miami. Renfro in motion. Danny White looking for Tony Hill. And they'll mark it up close to a first down. I think he has the yardage for the first near the 32-yard line. <laughs> Tony Hill will go back to the huddle and tell Danny White, get it down, Danny, get it down. No medicine balls, no medicine balls. <laughs> Those are rib ticklers. Well, they're trying to fix them up, of course. They, uh, it's one of those things they kind of expect them to run. He saw that was a play action fake. I expected them to really run, seriously run a little bit. And while I think Dallas thinks that they can. Comment on the interception a moment ago and talking to some of the coaches before the game. They say, you know, it's particularly that guy. He says, I've never seen a quarterback like Marino who can throw the ball in so many places. It looks like he shouldn't. And his guys always come up catching it. That's Don Strock with the cap on. He is, of course, a many year veteran. He's been around for 11 years. Has had some great games in relief. First of Greasy, then of Woodley. And, of course, he has not had to relieve Marino this year. First down and 10. The Cowboys moving. This one over the left side, and Newsom finds an opening, and he gets up there for about four yards near the 27 yard line before Bowser makes the stop. One advantage is the Cowboys will have because they have so many smaller offensive linemen is that they should be quicker and they should be uh, they should have a more versatile running game. Those guys can get outside on quick pitches and do uh, I guess more exotic blocking combinations inside. Second down and five. Renfro will move in motion. Out to the right side. Up at the top of your screen is Tony Hill. Dorsett. Nilsson uh, tried to get the block on Bowser. He got into Bowser, but Bowser was able to move off the block, make the stop. And hold Dorsett to a couple of yards. It'll be third down and three. Well, on that play, I think it's the surface of this field that stopped Dorsett. It, it looked like he had gotten around Bowser, and he slipped as he went or tried to turn up field. And I've noticed thus far the night three or four players slipped. That's it's, right. It rained here a little last night. Rained here a little this morning. The ball at the 26-yard line. Third down, long three. Getting close to set the end field goal range. Keep in mind, a prevailing wind and a strong, gusty wind blowing right into the Cowboys. Danny White, Tony Hill. Tony lost the first down. It depends upon where they mark the progress, and they're going to mark it very close to a first down as Don McNeil moved up and hammered Tony Hill after the reception. Tony Hill made a nice move on the first move. He realized he may be in danger of losing the first down. Then he was slung back at, at the second time. So I think they gave him they gave him the yardage after this first move. Now this is the move right there. Now this is not his fault at this point. They got him back there. Huh? <laughs> he was in the blender. That looked to be one of those delayed audibles too. <laughs> they, they bring out the yard marker. You'll watch as referee Pat Haggerty marks it off. We'd like to congratulate Washington on another division title yesterday and also those Cardinals. They played so well. Absolutely. To the Steelers against the Raiders. To Denver against Seattle. Hard to play up there. And of course the Chicago Bears brought out one of the senior citizens Greg Landry for a win yesterday. And if I don't mind even my Giants who are all watching right now up in New York. As a Dallas victory tonight would knock them out of the playoffs. They, of course, pulling strongly for Miami to win tonight. And let's not forget Art Monk with an all-time reception record. Oh, yeah. Charlie Joyner during the season. Eric Dickerson on his great effort this year. Who? 
First down and ten. Oh, watch his name. White again. Oh no. And it'll be picked off. At, taken in the end zone by Judson, and he's just flirting around back there. He knew better than to bring that out. Timmy Newsom was deep downfield. Danny White waffled one up there. Not a cowboy that could even take it away from Judson. Let's watch. Well, it, it appeared to me that I don't know where he's throwing that ball. <laughs> uh, I guess he's trying to hit Newsom over there in the side. Yeah, but he certainly didn't read the coverage. There are. So turn about fair play the Cowboys got the interception to set up a possible scoring drive and now Miami gets the turnover. We'll be back in a moment Green with the linebacker. They're trying to protect themselves on the corners Duper and Clayton with double coverage. Inside and off. Nathan. Oh. And Nathan he does everything so well to the 40 yard line. Gain of seven. Second down and three. Jim Jeffcoat there defensively for Dallas. Kind of one of those misdirection plays. They turned Randy White loose, which is dangerous for anybody's help. But Roy Foster, left guard there, going to be working against Randy White most of the evening. They let him go by, didn't block him, and Randy ran, ran by at that time. Roy Foster's had his work cut out for him today. He's number 61. This is his first year starting because of Bob Kuchenberg's injury, and he's an alternate in the Pro Bowl. And he works tonight against Randy White. Good cutback inside of Everson Walls to get the Miami first down at the 45-yard line. Walls, a good tackler. That time, Bennett broke back inside and gets the first down. Well, they're changing his cleats because, as I mentioned, it's rain it rained here this morning. It rained last night. The surface of this field is somewhat slick, and they're putting longer cleats on his shoes. That's good. You'll have better traction, but it could be bad because you can get knee injuries if you plant too solidly and get hit. A lot of defensive substitutions on first down. That's a little unusual for Dallas. Clock moving. First quarter. 2.45 remaining. No score. First and 10 Miami near their own 45. Marino again with a lot of time and gets it to Tony Nathan. You saw him carrying the ball from a setback position a few moments ago. This time you see Nathan as a receiver as Gene Lockhart is there to make the stop. 519 yards rushing into the night for this man and 54 receptions a typical Tony Nathan year. Well most of the ball Marino's passes the night should go to either a running back or the tight end because what the Cowboys are doing are some kind of combination double teaming on the two outside men Mark Clayton and Mark Duper which is uh, something I would think is smart to do. Second down four the ball just into Dallas Cowboy territory. Bennett right side trips up on his own man made a good move makes a good move however Looks like they had close to Dallas's 45 yard line that's two fine moves by Woody Bennett leading rusher into the night of course if you follow the Dolphins you know that tragically they lost David Overstreet they are all wearing black 20s on their helmet in memory of David Overstreet who was just coming into his own a year ago and then Andre Franklin the leading rusher from a year ago went down on the second game lost due to knee surgery so they have split the rushing chores between Woody Bennett and Tony Nathan and Joe Carter the rookie from Alabama has started to come on now third down very short big Pete Johnson in the game number 46 Boom. Johnson <laughs> came from San Diego fourth game of the season when Andre Franklin went down gets the first down for Miami near the 43 yard line of the Dolphins so we head to the final minute of the first quarter in which the Cowboys have had to work against a very stiff breeze. No score. That could be a real moral victory, as a matter of fact, for the Cowboys. Look at them coming in again. They're going to throw so many blitzes and stuff. They're trying to confuse Marina, but so far, I think they're waiting till the play is signaled in, and then they change the defensive personnel. Nice little chess game going on. Marino in trouble. Randy White. Covering Marino back in Miami territory inside their 45. Oh, Marino's lucky. Fumbled the ball and, and fell right on it. Now this year for he Randy did. White, who once again goes to the Pro Bowl. He's something. Big Randy working against Roy Foster, as we mentioned earlier. Got him right under the chin, too, didn't he? <laughs> Actually, he's got a new one in there. Yeah, Jeff, Jeff Taves is in there for Roy Foster. And now Foster. And watch that back ball. <laughs> yeah. Foster's Good. back in there now. <laughs> 
Randy's just such an outstanding football player. He opens up a lot of other things for some of the other guys, particularly Jeff. Jeff Coach. Second down, 18. Carter, 23, is the setback, and they'll try him the left side. Carter, good running, and Carter gets out of the arms of Michael Downs, stepping out of bounds, back close to the original line of scrimmage at the 43-yard line. Cowboys got to be a little upset with poor tackling, too, Frank. It was a good run, but they had some guys there in position to make that tackle. Downs was one. Bates was one. Jim Jeffcoat was in that area. Made a good move, though, to bounce off of him. They mark it inside the 43, so it'll be third down and nine. The 4-0 defense comes on for Dallas. They will blitz Bill Bates, who is going to the Pro Bowl as a free agent a year ago, Pro Bowl this year. They love him in Dallas. Plays like a linebacker. That's him, number 40. Special teams he made the Pro Bowl on. Here comes the blitz. Marino reads it, gets the ball to Duper, and Duper held short of the first down inside the 35 as the gun sounds ending the first quarter. And if they're thinking field goal, the Miami Dolphins, now Uwe von Schaman, having a poor year, will be kicking against that breeze. Shaman came on. He has not made an attempt at a field goal in the past three games. His longest field goal of the season is 37 yards. And then Don Shula had second thoughts at fourth down and two, and he sent the offensive unit back out onto the field. So they will go on fourth down. And they will also go with what they count on the most. This offensive team, they will go with the pass. At least they set up in the shotgun. Fourth down, and it's a long two. There was movement. Ted Moore open. He broke open and he walks up the ball and Ron Fellows has it again. And he drops the ball. But Dallas is there to cover, I do believe. Yes. There was a flag, but I think it's the uh, offensive line. I saw movement, I thought, by the offensive line. It was fourth down and two. Did he fumble that more? I don't think. He had control of it. It bopped loose and came into the arms of Ron Fellows. And let's get it sorted out. Here is referee Pat Haggerty. I want to. Here comes Pat. Illegal motion. Offense behind. First down. So we will take a look at that again. We'll look at it th at the reverse angle. Why we have the camera over there in the first place. You'll see number 89 coming across the middle. He's wide open. He never had control of it. No. He's hit hard by Bates. Fellows picks it up and it is fellow second turnover now he'll be hit by Jim Jensen I believe here he comes number 11 holds it talented and he knocked it out and he sweeps it out of the arms but the Cowboys cover they have a first down they have the win they're inside the 40 yard line Danny White fires to Tony Dorsett he's out of the 45 Near the 46, a gain of six. It'll be second down and four. Mark Brown made the stop for Miami. Talking to some of the coaches for the Cowboys before the game, and I really I thought they were teasing me, but maybe they're not. They said for the first time we've been talking about all week, when they throw the ball and they catch the ball, we're going to have one guy to try to knock the ball out of their hands. We were talking about that earlier in the year, and that's what it looked like that time. Baseman had put his head right on that ball. Second down, four. Still no score. Early moments. Second quarter. Dorsett. Tries oh. to sweep outside, and Judson makes a fine tackle at the line of scrimmage. Well, if Doug Donald, Donnelly, number 83, would have made a block on Judson, that play was well developed. Dorsett would have had a lot of running room. As you'll see, way on your outside, on the right side of your screen, that number 83 is trying to make a block. He doesn't make the block. Judson defeats him. Comes up and makes a fine tackle on Tony Dorsett. 4 0 defense, anticipating pass. And again, Miami bringing in their defensive specialists now. Their pass prevent defense. They brought them in like Dallas, very late. Listen to the crowd. Danny White gets away from Bo Camper. Stumbles, gets away again, and he is really hammered. Oh. Danny White, slow, getting up. He got away from Bo Camper initially, and then he really got hit. He had A.J. Douay 
was there. And that will be fourth down. And this is the defense Dolphin fans have been questioning and wondering about. The Killer Bees are back, at least on this series. The Killer Bees, Batters, Baumhauer, Bokhammer, Brzezinski, Brophy, Brown, Bowser, Blackwood, Blackwood. I'm telling you, that's a bunch of bees. There's Tolden Walker and Danny White. Shaken. He'll stay in, however, and he will do the punting. Danny White has on occasion run the football. I don't think we'll look for it on this one. What a nice kick, though. And oh. it's a Miami bound into the end zone for the touchback. So Miami will have their football back at the 20-yard line following a 54-yard punt into the end zone by Danny White. We'll be right back. One record uh, is in total jeopardy because Marino has tied the record set by Danny Fouts back in 1981 of 4,802 yards. He'll exceed that considerably, barring something unforeseen tonight. And, of course, there are other records to come. He's thrown for 400 yards four times this season. That's an amazing stat to me. First down and 10 Miami at the 20-yard line. Boom. Nathan. And uh, Nathan for a couple of yards. It'll be second down and eight. ABC's Wide World of Sports this Saturday, 1984, the year in review. ABC's Wide World of Sports will be moving to its new time period. Now, that'll be 4.30 Eastern and Pacific, 3.30 Central. We'll take a look back at the dramatic and very emotional year in the sporting world from Sarajevo to Los Angeles, from the Kentucky Derby to the Indianapolis 500. And you can share it all in a special two-hour presentation this Saturday with us on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Again, that special time, 4.30 Eastern Pacific, 3.30 Central. Second down and eight, Miami. Joe Carter, single setback. That was intended to be a fake reverse, and forget it. Deep penetration. Play scale. Took away all the fake. Jim Jeffcoat was in there. And so, too, was Big John Dutton. Jim Jeffcoat really has come on in the last few weeks. Number one draft pick a year ago from Arizona State. Loss of three. It'll be third down 13 as we look at the numbers from the first quarter. And you would expect two zero, zero. offensive teams. Mm -hmm. Certainly Miami to put something on the scoreboard. If you have just joined us, such is not the case in the game. That means everything to Dallas. If they lose tonight, they'll watch the playoffs at home. And the Giants will become an NFC wild card. The Dolphins. They think it's very important to have the home field advantage throughout the playoffs. If they win tonight, they'll have it. Look out, Danny. Marino and wide open downfield oh. is Nat Moore. What a catch by Nat. He was tagged, wasn't he? Michael Downs, I believe, was the guy that hit him. Not for sure. I don't know whether you happened to see that shot that Nat Moore took against the Jets a few weeks ago when they spun him like a propeller. He'll hold on to the football, this 11-year veteran. We'll look at it wide, and you'll see Nat Moore circling from a wingback position. He's wide open in front of Michael Downs. Yeah, actually, he was working against Everson Walls. Everson tried to bump him at the line of scrimmage, and Everson fell down, and that left Nat Moore wide open. Good job by Marino, too, because Marino... They're going to stop the game now. Marino handed the game ball. At least the first game <laughs> ball he'll get tonight by referee <laughs> Pat Haggerty. He has broken the single season yardage record set by Dan Fouts back in 1981. Marino now at 4,853 yards, and he is closing on, well, what could have seen the impossible a few years ago. He could even become tonight the first passer ever to pass for 5,000 yards. That was a lot of miles. A little poetic justice that Nat Moore was the guy that caught it. He's the leading all-time receiver for Miami. And near the 39-yard line, the Dolphins will put it in play. First and ten. Looking deep. Michael Downs was running stride for stride with Duper. Fellows back there also. But it was Michael Downs who made the play on the ball. I've got a feeling that's the kind of pass that Coach Landry was talking about before the game that Marino will just throw anyway. Now he had Duper look like he was open, but now they were in a zone. So all he had to do is play that center field and come over and cover it. He had a better chance, or certainly as good a chance, to catch it as did the Dolphin receiver. Well, what they're doing is spreading out this Cowboy defense. I noticed on that play that Dan Johnson had defeated Mike Hickman coming across the middle, and I think they're just opening up these Cowboys. 
Second and long, the Cowboys love to blitz. They love to bring everyone on second and long. Tom Landry always has. They play it straight. Nathan over the left side, and they will stay in passing yarding situation. Good recognition by Lockhart. Down and seven. Lockhart, the young middle linebacker for Dallas, and, and Jeffco, Jim Jeffco, both good recognition, came back in, filled the hole. The Cowboys have had 25 sacks over the past three games. A lot of that a tribute to one of the great Hall of Famers, Ernie Stoutner, Don, who's taken over much of the defensive duties that he has been sharing. He really has. Talk about it again just in a moment, but he has done some new things there, and they've paid off for him the last few weeks. Dallas in their 4 0 defense. Here it comes, and Marino reads it. And almost taking the ball from Clayton was Ron Fellows. He's already had one interception. Now, I'll tell you, when that kind of blitz is on, Fellows has got to be full of butterfl butterflies in the summit because he knows he has no help from anyone. Mark Clayton made a heck of a play here to get this ball away from Fellows, who caught it right there, but look at Clayton come through and strip it. Meanwhile, there's a flag, flag in the back. backfield. And could have been roughing the passer back there. Here is Pat Haggerty. Personal foul. Roughing the passer, number 40. Defense. Good yeah. Did not see it. Bill Bates. Bill Bates, tough little special teams player, went for the head, tried to pull away. I'm innocent, he said. That's a very close call. That is a I, very I, yeah. close call. And, I thought he was in the air when the guy let the ball go. If he was pumping, uh, he would have come down on him. Well, that's amazing. Maybe he shouldn't have hit him in the helmet. Is at Dallas's 43-yard line. Still no score. Second quarter, 9.57 remaining in the half. That was a big one because it was a third down play, was it? Yes, it was. Marino. Ooh, but, but you saw Marino at his finest. He didn't have that ball even caught. He just released it to Mark Clayton on a pass that should have been caught. You were talking about Ernie Stoutner a moment ago, Frank, and I think Ernie is very deserving of the defensive play, particularly the last few weeks. What they've kind of done, you know, Dallas has been known as, as we, for the flex defense, very state in their ways. They, they play offensive formations. Tom's kind of turned him loose, and each week he puts in at least one new blitz. They've started opening that thing up and going for it. They don't feel like they've got the kind of guys who can stay there and play that same old defense. Whoop. No flag. Bennett tries to get oh, outside, yeah. moving over the right side, but apparently Jim Jeffcoat, I believe it was, was able to get back, and there will be a pickup of about a yard and a half. Another good play by Ron Fellows there, O.J. He came up again from that position. They just they asked an awful lot of the secondary. They've been burned an awful lot through the years, particularly the cornerbacks. But you saw Ron covering Clayton deep. And the next play, he's up, makes a tackle about two yards past the line of scrimmage. Third. There they were. Excuse me, Frank. Go ahead. Third down and eight. Again, the passing situation. And again, a down on which the Cowboys have been blitzing tonight. And they have Bates up at the line of scrimmage and clink scale. Pressure, but he gets it to Clayton. Oh, does he? There he goes. 60 oh. touchdown reception. Mark Clayton. <laughs> what a job. 41 yards, and Marino right on stride with Clayton. And this eighth round draft pick from last year only had six receptions a year ago. He has just scored his 16th touchdown. He only needs one more to tie. A record held by Don Hudson. Does a good job here again. You see him give him a good outside move, beat him inside. You saw him drop a ball earlier, and that's because he was trying to run before he caught it. And I think he's just about the best runner with the ball under the de defense as any, any player playing the game today. He can catch it underneath the defense and run by the guys. No question. He was a tremendous punt returner a year ago. That's why they didn't use him. Only six receptions a year ago. He beat Victor Scott. The rookie defensive back out of Colorado. And we have our first score of the night, and Von Shaman, the strap, the holder, will attempt the conversion. Strap. Splits the uprights, and they love it in Miami. 8.59 remaining in the first half, and the Dolphins are on top, 7 to nothing. Clayton, 16th touchdown reception. <laughs> Dan Marino 
45th touchdown pass, and that has set a new NFL record for team touchdowns. A mark that was held by Houston and Miami. Cohell coming into tonight at 66. Houston setting that mark back in 61. It is now the sole possession of Miami at 67 touchdowns for the season. Von Schaumann to kick. Gary Allen is deep, number 31, with Chuck McSwain, number 35. Gary Allen from the five-yard line. And Allen runs smartly out over the 25 to the 27-yard line. And let's take a look at the scoring drive. And on a third down and passing situation, you'll see the yellow line that indicates roughing the passer, Bill Bates caught there that gave new life to the Miami drive at the 43 yard line of Dallas we'll be back in the Orange Bowl in a moment Dallas Cowboys now down seven to nothing again a loss tonight they'll watch the playoffs for the first time in 10 years first and 10 from their own 25 yard line Dallas Danny White oh my God, throws a good. lateral and unless he was ruled in the grass the ball will be marked back there Doug Betters got a hold of Danny White. I tell you what was worse, his primary receiver, Tony Hill, he was looking at Tony, he pumped the throw at Tony, and Tony ran a stop pattern, and he was wide open. Well, hey, hey, got to get it going here. Now, now, watch, this is Tony Hill. Now, this is his primary receiver. Here's the guy he's looking at. He goes to throw the ball, and he doesn't throw it. Huh. <laughs> Called a little hesitation. But yeah, about that time was when Doug Betters arrived. Second down, 14. Trying to get the screen, and the Dolphins read it. And a makeup to Cosby, and it's good. good he has move. the ball for a Cowboy first down at the 47-yard line. Nice job of improvisation that time. The Cowboys, they don't look sharp. I mean, they're not fooling anyone. That was supposed to be a screen pass, and they didn't fool anyone. Danny does a good job of improvising, and that's Look at why Cosby, Cosby is in, in the there. Pro Bowl. You bet. He has really had a heck of a year for him down there. Probably the best tight end from a catching standpoint. I know I've got some old teammates that would disagree with that, but he really has got some nice hands. Tony Hill right. Renfro left. Cowboys High receiver down. for Dallas. Cowboy. First down and 10. Dorsett. Oh, Tony. Dorsett right into the arms of Jetson. They played that so well. Jetson on the outside. It was Bowser on the inside. And Dorsett had nowhere to go. He had nowhere to go, but he got about five yards, four to five yards on first down. And most teams would call that a successful first down. Brought him in a zone, it looked like. And he stayed at home. Judson stayed at home that time. He didn't go with the receiver going deep, so he was just sitting out there on the outside waiting for him. That's the difference between a good back and a great back. A great back will appear as if he didn't get much, and you'll find out he got something. He got him five, didn't he? Don Leon now, wide receiver. Speedster from Ohio State, top of your screen. Tony Hill left on second and five. Blitz is on. Danny White picked it up uh, nicely, gets it to Cosby. He's close to first down yardage. I thought you called covered him like a rug. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Blackwood was right there. If you didn't catch it, you would have thought it would have been a flag. Should have been a flag. Glenn Blackwood, one of the Blackwood boys. The Bruise Brothers, they call themselves. Lyle and Glenn. They say it's not close enough for a measurement. So it'll be third down and much less than a yard to go. And there is Randy White, perhaps having his best year, and he has absolutely destroyed the concept of training camp. He was a holdout throughout uh -huh. the entire training camp this year. Came in, and he came in in high gear, and he has not slowed down. Third, and perhaps a foot. This is Nissen. And they stacked it up pretty well, didn't they? Stacked it up, but I think he has the yardage for the first down. He needed about a foot. Look, it still appeared as if their timing was off on that play. You saw the tight end come in motion, Cosby. Looked like he may have gotten there too soon or too late. I think what Frank was talking about earlier, which is true, and it happens a lot of times, but they haven't had the same offensive unit starting all year long, and it is a little bit different on that on the runs. I mean, you know, they've got to get that timing. If you're left guard, it's a different assignment. If you play right guard. 
That's just barely, isn't it? This one gets the first down. The drive stays alive. Landry trying to keep the Cowboys in the playoff scene. The Dolphins trying to maintain American Football Conference home field advantage. And both of them with the eye on the Super Bowl coming up January the 20th. 20th, we'll be bringing it to you at 4 o'clock Eastern time, and we are certainly looking forward to it. First down, Dallas. They are down 7 to nothing. They're at Miami's 43-yard line. Play action, Danny White. Throws underneath, complete to Tony Hill, and Tony Hill will have another Cowboy first down at the 28-yard line, and we'll pause five seconds and allow our stations to identify themselves. Channel 10, WPLG, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. A shootout between the Dallas Cowboys and the Miami Dolphins from the Orange Bowl in Miami. The Dolphins leading on a Dan Marino 41-yard touchdown pass to Mark Clayton. That's the only score thus far. We had a scoreless first quarter. Hard to believe with these two teams. Dallas has the football. First down and 10, 28-yard line of Miami. Strong prevailing breeze behind them. Dorsett. Uh, better. Nice play. Great pass rusher. Not bad in the open field. Boy, he did play that one well, didn't he? That's called reading that guy right over you. And he read that tackle and going to pull out to the outside that time. Stayed right with him. That's the way to do it. That was Kurt Peterson, big guard, actually, that came out there. Betters was right on him. Loss of five. Dallas back to the 33-yard line with the second down and 15. Baumauer gets a breather. Bill Barnett comes in. We told you earlier, the nose tackle Baumauer playing with a very sore ankle. Worked hardly at all this week. And they need him in the middle. They're looking for a pass rush. The Miami Dolphins. Caused the emotion. Danny White in trouble. And down goes Danny White. Mark Brown on the blitz. The linebacker coming in. Now the loss all the way back near the 45-yard line. So it will be third down, extremely long yardage. Don, it appears to me that the offensive line of the Cowboys uh, has just given up too much ground. Don't you think maybe they should start popping these guys at the line of scrimmage and fighting them there because this Dolphin defensive line is getting a hit of steam and these guys just aren't slowing them down. They're not beating them clean. They're just pushing them back. Daryl Harris comes in. He played a long time here at Miami, 266 receptions. They traded him up to Cleveland. Cleveland released him, and Dallas picked him up a couple of weeks ago. He wears number 86 for the Cowboys. Third down, 27. Danny White looking for big things from Tony Hill. <laughs> You're not kidding. Happens, and the Cowboys are out of field goal range. Good defensive effort by the Dolphins, and the crowd will show their appreciation. That one could have really hurt him. Hey, 4.06 remaining in the half. Danny White stays on. Fulton Walker will drop back and guess with Danny. Danny looking for the left corner. Ooh. Did he catch it? Uh, no. no. Boy, he just barely missed it. Just missed. Right? And Miami will have the football back at their own 20-yard line. They lead 7 to nothing. And we'll be back at a wild Orange Bowl in a moment. Please, there were six quarterbacks taken ahead of Dan Marino a year ago. He went in the 27th round. One has to question some of the scouting that has gone on. I bet you all six of them wish they were playing for the Dolphins, too. Jackie Sherrill, coach down at AM, says he thought Marino had a throw when he was at the Pittsburgh. you believe that? <laughs> first and 10 Miami. They're on top 7 to nothing. 3.58 remaining in the first half. Marino gets the ball to Hardy. And Hardy, for a gain of about 8, it'll bring up second down and 2 in the arms of Dexter Klinkscale. Only on one occasion tonight has... Dallas been able to put any pressure on Marino with just the front four guys rushing. So that tells a little something about that offensive line that we talked about. Most of them are either going to the Pro Bowl or they're the alternate. And Dallas has got a pretty good front four in there. Well, the Dolphins have...
certainly got this Cowboy defense spread out because I, I would bet on the last eight pl throwing plays, somebody for the Dolphins has been open over the middle. Duper right, that's Mark Clayton up at the top of your screen. He caught the first touchdown pass. And we watched Tony Nathan. Good play. Of the first down, Team Lockhart, who replaced yeah. Bob Bruning some five weeks ago as the starter, and he is a hard-hitting rookie out of Houston. Thank you. Rooney on injury reserve with a bad back. Lockhart just plays with that wonderful, kind of reckless abandon that it seems like you always try to attribute to a middle linebacker, and you see his size there, 6'2", 228, not terribly big for a middle linebacker, but he's very enthusiastic. Well, he must have been doing a good job because other than last week's game against the Washington Redskins, they've been giving up only over six weeks, 14 points a game. It's tough. Dallas, of course, in command of that Redskin game until they turn it over four times in the third quarter. Full credit to Washington. They'll take it away from you. Third and short, and Marino wants to go on top. I don't the ball to Nat Moore. A flag is down. That probably is going to be pass interference against Dallas. It was a superbly run route by Nat Moore, and Marino had it right in front of him on the break. Well, it might be on Nat, too, Frank, because I... No, it's on it's on Dallas. Well, Nat's lucky enough. You know, normally he will get the third best defensive back covering him because he's the third receiver coming into the game. Uh, on that play, he had Everson Walls, who's we have defensive holding number 47. He climbed first down. He makes a move on Flink Scale, OJ, and Flink yeah. Scale could do nothing but try and, and grab see, him and prevent it. He oh. did, and watch who he defeats after that. It was Everson Walls. He was able to defeat. And uh, catch the ball, and he's doing a super job for a guy who claims he's going to retire when the season is over. But once again, they were over the middle. You mentioned that a while ago. The middle seems to be pretty open. The first down is at the 48-yard line. Miami, with 219 remaining in the first half, leading seven to nothing. They have three timeouts remaining, and they can work with the two-minute warning. Tony Nathan. Trying to get to the outside, and the rookie from Washington, Vince Alquitten, slowed him at the line of scrimmage, and the pursuit took him at the that first down Bates. marker. That was Bill Bates that came running across like the wild man. The two-minute warning is announced to both benches. We'll be back with the final two minutes of the first half in a moment. Ball. Two minutes remaining in the first half. The Dolphins on top, 7 to nothing, and the Dolphins with the football at the 48-yard line, second down and 10. Reminder. Coming up at halftime, Jim Lampley will have highlights from yesterday, and we'll take a, an in-depth look at the playoff picture. Both of these teams are certainly involved. The Dolphins have clinched a long time ago. They have a 13-2 record, losing only to the Raiders of San Diego. Dallas, they lose tonight. Well, it's home for Dallas for the holidays, and they'll watch the others, and they haven't done that only one time out of 18 years. Second down and 10. Nathan, he releases it so quick. Eight-yard pickup near the 44-yard line of Dallas. Nice little protective cup for him to work in there. He's really, they're really getting to the outside. He can stand still. Bro, Dolphins with three timeouts, but they will go with their two-minute offense. He doesn't want to kill the clock. He's looking for a completion. He tried to squeeze one in. Let's go now to Jim Lampley. All right, Frank, very quickly, one NFL story. First-year Minnesota Viking coach Les Steckel was fired today along with his entire staff. Move not entirely unexpected. The Vikings finished the 3-13 and season with six losses in a row, gave up 484 points to set a league record in that category, and to put it as politely as possible, in recent weeks, some of Steckel's players didn't seem to be risking their bodies in the way necessary to win in this league. So tonight, one year after the retirement of Bud Grant, a proud franchise with a glorious history, is starting over, Frank. That's Steckel. You get the feeling, if you know the young man, he'll be back. There's Gary Allen on fourth down. Reggie Roby will kick against a stiff breeze. He, oh, <laughs> that's the a, entire stadium could get under that one. And it takes a Miami bounce. Things seem to work that way when you're 13 and 2. And Dallas with 122 on the clock, down 7 to nothing. We'll have a first down at the nine-yard line. The Cowboys with three timeouts remaining. Bill Parcells, you know, is looking on tonight with the rest of the Giants team and fans of the New York area. A Miami win tonight, and they will become the wild card, the final playoff team 
in the drive to the Super Bowl. And Miami leads the Dallas Cowboys 7 to nothing, 122 remaining in the first half. The Cowboys first and 10 at their own nine yard line. Danny White, Tony Hill. Tony Hill. Spin, twist, short of the first down. It'll be second and short. Well, Tony's trying to make something happen. He has a reputation of being a great runner after he catches the ball, but he should have gotten out of bounds. Ticking down to one minute. Dallas, three timeouts. You're Second right. down and about a yard. You are right. Hill left. Doug Donnelly up at the top of your screen, the speedster. Dorsett. Dorsett gets the first down to the 23-yard line, but seconds tick away. Uh, aren't they going to call a time? Hey, how about a timeout? There it is. Danny White uses his timeout. He'll have two remaining, 36 seconds remaining, and he'll move over to visit with Tom Landry. And we'll be back in the Orange Bowl in a moment. Should Miami go on to win the Giants, but join the Los Angeles Rams as the two NFC wild cards. The Giants will play at Los Angeles in the NFC wild card game next Sunday. Should Miami win, and the AFC wild card game will be moved to Saturday. That would be the Raiders at Seattle. Other ramifications. Jim Lampley will be talking about at halftime. But of course, for Dallas, they trail only seven to nothing. They know that they have got to win to stay in the playoff picture. That, by the way, was against the Giants. Earlier in the year, the second game of the season. Dorsett. Oh, what a great the ball, and He was hit hard by Mark Brown. Uh, Bo Camper putting pressure on Danny White. Well, the Cowboys can't be totally unhappy. They have a reputation, even though they haven't scored in the first half. They have a reputation of being a great second-half football team. Look at Danny now. He's kind of leading a little bit over here. Of course, he had some pressure coming in. But that mm -hmm. ball right there was flopped up, and that one could have really been intercepted. And and Mark uh, Brown had totally yeah. focused on Dorsett. If he had yeah. just looked up, the ball would have been in his arms for six. Second down, 10. 29 seconds remaining in the half. Going to run a little draw here. Draw play. That's Springs. Springs gets about six. Hardly enough. As Dallas will have to use another timeout. Danny White's defense last week against the Redskins, the touchdown that was intercepted in the third, uh, the pass was intercepted for a touchdown in the third quarter. Really, Donnelly ran a, he they ran a wrong route. They did not call timeout. He wants it to go to the half. They have two timeouts remaining. <laughs> and they've let a lot of time run off. <laughs> I, and then throw a short pass. Uh, well, the I Giants, guess the game plan is to stay close. The Giants have got one back back. That's the end of the first half. Miami on top, 7 to nothing. Stick around. Jim Lampley will have halftime highlights when we come back. The Steelers took the field in Los Angeles knowing that Cincinnati had already won, that they'd have to win to make the playoff. Then they beat the Raiders for the first time in seven games, stretching almost over nine full years. They made Mark Wilson ineffective. This Donnie Shell interception in the end zone before halftime preserved the 3-0 Pittsburgh lead. First of two key plays in the game for Shell. The other came with two and a half minutes left. The Raiders rallying under Jim Plunkett in relief of Wilson. The rush on Plunkett, again, number 31 with the football. That preserved the 13-7 Pittsburgh victory. Sources in the Raider front office. Look sharp. Oh, uh, no. Boy, he just barely missed just missed. And Miami will have the foot. Get under that one. And playoffs. Well, the San Francisco part of the Cowboys. Oh, uh, number 23.
Wolf. The return of pass rusher Fred Dean has given playoffs. Well, get under that one. He's starting over, Frank. That's Steckle. You get the feeling if you know the young man, he'll be back. There's Gary Allen on fourth down. Uh, look sharp. I mean, they're not fooling anyone. That was supposed to be a... Part of the Cowboys. Record six. Cowboys can make it in. They will hope, along with nine other teams, to make the trip to Stanford Stadium in Palo Alto, California, one of college football's most tradition-laden stadiums, hosting its first professional football game, Super Bowl 19, January 20, to be seen here on ABC. Being brought to you by Computerland, with over 700 stores worldwide. Their business is computers with a focus on you. In just a matter of minutes, the second half will begin here in Miami. The Dolphins on top of Dallas, 7 to nothing. The one touchdown in the first half was a 41-yard pass from Dan Marino to Mark Clayton with about nine minutes left in the second period. Marino's 45th touchdown pass of the year. Clayton's 16th touchdown reception. The NFL record is 17. The great downfield block by number 89, Matt Moore on Dexter Klingscale, escorted Clayton into the end zone for that touchdown, which made it 7 nothing Miami. Again, the playoff implications of this ball game. If Miami is able to win the football game, then the Dolphins will secure the home field advantage throughout the AFC playoffs. If they lose, they may find themselves playing the conference championship game in Denver, where the Broncos are 7-1 this year on January 6th. If the Cowboys win, NFC wildcard game Rams at Dallas. If the Cowboys lose, the New York Giants will make it into the playoffs and will play the Rams in Anaheim in the wildcard game. In a moment, Frank and Dandy and OJ will be back with more action in this ball game. Colton Walker is the man the Miami Dolphins would like to see receive the kickoff. Dangerous return man, Super Bowl record holder from two years ago, 190 yards on four returns. One for 98 yards and a touchdown. Apiel set the end to kick off. Cowboys down seven and nothing. Septien uses the stiff breeze to carry into the end zone. Walker hesitated and then decided to bring it out. And Walker held short of the 20-yard line. That would have been a touchback. It'll be first down Miami. And Dan Marino on the night, 10 of 17, 153 yards, one touchdown, one interception by Ron Fellows. He now needs 103 yards to achieve 5,000 yards in a single season. Truly remarkable. But he is truly remarkable. Spoke with Bob Greasy a moment ago. Nothing but superlatives 
did Bob Greasy have for Dan Marino? And about anybody else you want to talk to? At the 19-yard line, first down and 10. On the quick count. And that almost picked off. Oh, twice. Tried to squeeze it in to Dan Johnson, the tight end, and sliding up there with Dexter Klinkscale, who got a big hand on it. It'll be second down and 10. And Harrison Walls actually almost had a shot at it after he bounced in the air, it looked like. That's all right, Danny. Loosen up. I noticed those Cowboys played those receivers very tough inside out, and I guess they're going to try to make an adjustment and not let these Miami Dolphins receivers get open over the middle. Late, man, late substitution that time. Cowboys continuing to change defensively very late after the play has been sent in to Dan Marino. Oh, Movement yeah. The line of scrimmage. And the ball is free, but I think Dallas is going to be called offside. They surely are. It He's covered on. by John Dutton. Or John Dutton, I think it was the man who moved, and then the ball was Hegman, I think, maybe covered in by Hegman. Yeah. Oh, that is a toughie there for Dallas. Referee once again, Pat Haggerty. You saw the movement. Well, if he hadn't have jumped, he probably would not have been in the backfield, and it probably wouldn't have been a fumble. That's probably why they penalize him <laughs> five yards for doing silly <laughs> stuff like that. Offside, number 78, defense. Taking an unfair advantage. They'll move it up five. The down will remain the same. Second down and five. And again, defensive changes on the part of the Cowboys. Uh, number 23, Little Joe Carter is in the game. I call him Little. He's not that small. He's 5'11", 198 pounds. Reminds you a lot of Mike Garrett, former great Kansas City running back. Rookie fourth round draft pick out of Alabama, Joe Carter. Marino, perhaps changing at the line of scrimmage. Marino, Cooper, uh -huh. he did not have control of the ball. He uh -huh. stepped out of bounds, bobbling the ball. He had beaten Everson Walls very convincingly, what a but nice he did not catch. control it. What a nice catch anyway. Was I would say that's an understatement, Frank. He got bumped there. Everson slipped again. And you, a, a guy with the speed of Duper, you can't afford to slip. I'd say that's a nice job of concentration. Look at these guys. These two guys catch their ball now. He, he did, oh, juggle it. Boy, just a touch. Yeah. But they catch it in their hands. They've got great hands, these two young receivers down here. That ball was almost caught for Duper on the pass from Marino. Third down five. From the shotgun, Marino with a quick release, fires, and it gets to Duper in time. Even though Marino was under tremendous pressure, it'll be a Miami Dolphin first down. Give him a lot of credit for holding on to that one, too. Duper's an awfully fine receiver. And yeah, these two guys came in here tonight. Duper with 67 receptions, 1,249 yards into the night. And on the other side, Clayton had come into the night with 69 receptions. And both of them averaging over 18 yards. And, of course, Clayton has been responsible for the only score of the game, a 41-yard touchdown pass from Dan Marino. That was his 16th of the season. But they truly are remarkable. Both of them, 5-9. First and 10. Marino looking big for Clayton. Flag goes down. There was bumping. And this is Everson Walls. Well, from what I can see, both guys, their body bumped, but Clayton's arm came out on Everson Walls. It'd be interesting to see what the officials call. And the stride for stride. Here's Pat Haggerty, and it's going to work against the Cowboys, as it so often does in a pushing match with receivers. You okay. can't make contact with that receiver after five yards downfield. And here Walls with the right hand. Warding off Clayton again, a very close call. I'm telling you. What can you do as a defensive back? I have not been able to figure it out in 15 years for sure. Well, <laughs> what did he do? What did he do? He did about as good as he well at the last minute there he made, but he was going he had, for the ball. No, he, he has the same He's right to the guy to go for the ball. And he caught it. Another Miami record. They have now broken San Diego's first down record set back in 1981. <laughs> Who keeps all these things up? OJ. First down Miami, 39-yard line of Dallas. Marino. 
Brown. Checked up field. Gets it back out on the flat. Goes to Nathan. Bill Bates in on that stop as Nathan gets inside the 35 for a gain of four. Let's take a look at the stats from the first quarter and we'll dissolve to the first half. Time of possession equal there. The only differential was a seven point differential and that was Marino to Clayton 41 yards out. But Miami starting to pile up the yardage. Well, I tell you, the big play in the first half was a rough in the quarterback call that right. went against Dallas and uh, that call against Everson Walls may be the biggest play of the second half. Early moments of the third quarter, Miami leading 7 to nothing. They have a second down and six. The ball inside the 35 of Dallas. Marino again, quick release. Nathan once again. Nathan breaking tackles inside the corner. Oh, a nice job. In the arms of Everson Walls, first down Miami. That play was made possible by Dwight Stevenson. He did a super job of snapping the ball and getting to his left side and blocking the blitzing linebacker coming from outside. They kill you with this man, Tony Nathan. You double cover on the outside, Duper and Clayton. You have to take Dan Johnson, the tight end, and cover him with the linebacker. The Cowboys can do that with Dickerson, but somebody has got to pick up Nathan, who worked so well out of the backfield. Somebody has got to get to Dan Marino. <laughs> they true. don't have a chance. Sacked him one time tonight. At the 19-yard line, first and 10, Miami. Clayton splits right. Duper, top of your screen. Marino with a lot of time. That almost picked off. It was intended for Dan Johnson, and Mike Hagman had his hands on it for a moment. Have you noticed that all the near interceptions have been thrown to the right side, and that could have something to do with Ed Tutal Jones and John Dutton. You know, Ed Tutal is 6'9", Dutton is 6'7", and it's got to be tough trying to throw over or around that height. Tony Nathan comes back in, second down, long yardage. Second down down the Cowboys, frequently blitz on. Danny White struggled through the first half of this game. He did not throw the ball. He did not throw it crisply. Interesting decision coming up. On second and ten. Oh, they're doing a job on Randy White. Three guys there. Trying to get it into the end zone, intended for Nathan. There was bumping, but no flag. It'll be third down and ten. Had three guys assigned to Randy White that time. They kept him off, too. So if you can afford to use three guys, that means somebody else got to put a little bit more pressure on there. Either a Jones or a Smerrick or Jeff Coat, somebody else. You can't take three guys and block one. Don Shula has won a shared first place in this AFC East 12 of 15 years. Then do. Four Super Bowls with Miami, one with Baltimore, and now Miami has set another record. They moved ahead of San Diego's team record in 1981 in total yards. The old record, 67-44. They are now at 67-56. They continue to fall. Third and long, Cowboys showing blitz. This has been Matt Moore down thus far. Marino again, reads it. Oh, is that... Gets it to Cephalo, and Cephalo reaches forward for the first down. What a job, what a job. Great timing pattern, Marino, Cephalo. Oh. This kid is cool as ice water. That was so good. You get the feeling he's cheering for Cephalo. Every time Cephalo catches the ball, he runs to him and congratulates him. First down, Miami. First down, Miami. First down and goal. Let's look at it again. They're all coming. People are coming from everywhere. He just zipped that ball out. Look at it. That spiral so tight. Did you see Nathan? He has been running with the ball, receiving the ball. That time, he picked up Michael Downs and allowed the completion. That was nice. At the eight-yard line, first down, goal to go. Woody Bennett, 34, Tony Nathan, 22, setbacks. Nathan. Oh, you have to like Nathan. What a nice play. Not publicized like maybe the Clayton's, the Dupers, the Marinos. But he has been doing this for six years. Maybe it's a little, a little too early to speculate, but let's assume that Miami does score here. They go down 14 nothing. If the quarterback decision is going to be made for next year, there's been a quarterback controversy since training camp there. One would wonder, would you come in with Hogaba? If you do, then that pretty well puts Danny White on the trade block. If you leave Danny White in there, that's telling Hogaba something, I would guess. No matter what the change or not, Don, somebody's probably going to have to go. Somebody's got to go as well. I just wonder. Second and goal, there's a mix-up and a flag goes down. Marino trying to get it to Big Pete Johnson. 
You know, Frank, it's, it's such a tough position, as we know, because you're in the, the public eye playing quarterback, and Dallas has had some trouble, and they started the season with Hogaboom. We did the game out in L.A. He started, did really quite well. Stumbled through a lot of interceptions. But no matter what, this guy, somebody's got to get the team going. They've got to put a little spark in there. I don't think they should, uh, as we are about to get the call. Yep. Battle back Miami up five, illegal motion. Don, if I was them, I wouldn't be concerned about next year. They still have this year, and they can get into the playoffs. And thus far, it seems apparent that Randy White, I mean, excuse well, Danny me, White, Danny yeah. White is not going to be the guy to do it tonight. Well, Danny's warming up, and Hogaboom is not, so uh, they're going to go with him right now. Here's Pat Haggerty. <laughs> The illegal motion was declined. The Cowboys will take the loss on the play. It'll be third down, goal to go. The ball at the four-yard line. 10:47 remaining in the third quarter. Dolphins on top, seven to nothing, threatening to make it a 14-point lead. Keep in mind, Dallas. If they lose tonight, they are out of the playoff picture, and the Giants are in as the second wild card with the Los Angeles Rams in the NFC. Somebody better get out there on the outside. saw him a few weeks ago against the Jets. He had a couple of touchdown passes. When you double up on those outside men, that tight end is going to be open. Nathan will be open coming out of the backfield, and Marino has now hit for his 46th touchdown of this season. He threw that one in a, an area that's no bigger than a number two washed up. If you watch Hardy come into the inside, and keep in mind there's some little traffic there. Look at this ball. Can't be, but he any place but right there. What Marino, a nice throw. Marino now 193 yards and 15 completions. A couple of touchdowns, one interception. Von Schaumann. The Cowboys now have found themselves in a very tough position. They are 14 down with 10.43 remaining in the third quarter. A loss tonight. They'll watch it all at home. It's a festive time here in the Orange Bowl with 10.43 remaining in this game between Miami and Dallas in the third quarter, that is. Miami has moved on top, 14 to nothing. They're set to kick off. Von Sharman, a quick look at Gary Allen, 31. Chuck McSwain, 35. Dallas needs to get things happening. They have struggled. They have not thrown the ball well. They have not run the ball well. They are because the Giants just packed another bag. McSween from the six yard line. And breaks out to the 25 where it'll be first down and 10. I remind you, college football excitement continuing on ABC with the Gator Bowl on December the 28th. The seventh ranked South Carolina at 10 and 1 takes on ninth ranked Oklahoma State at 9 and 2. And then on January 1st, the Sugar Bowl featuring number four ranked Nebraska against 12th ranked LSU. Both games will be seen live at 8 o'clock Eastern here on ABC. And when you think of LSU, you think of Bill Arnsparker, who used to coach the defense for so many years here at Miami. His first year at LSU, he's in the Sugar Bowl. And will be joining him. First down and 10. Cowboys at the 25-yard line. Short set, single setback. White, a lot of time, gets the door set. Puts a lot of moves on Bowser. Squeaked a yard out of it, but Bowser makes the open field tackle. Gain of a couple. It'll be second down and eight. Let's take a look at the scoring drive. And again, keep in mind that long pass interference call. That one little black mark you see between the tent, between the 30 and the 20 there was that pass that he threw to Cephalo. And that was as that was as well as he can throw. And of course, the other one when Nathan fumbled way back at the 40-yard line and Dallas was penalized on second and eight. Dorsett 
Strikes back against the grain, out of the 30 to the 32. A gain of four. It'll bring up third down and three. One name you haven't heard much of tonight is number 28 for Miami, Don McNeil. Now, when Don is healthy, he's one of the best cornerbacks in football. And when he's in this Miami Dolphins secondary, they're a different defensive unit because he can play a man one-on-one, -on -one, and the other three defensive backs can run combinations on the other guys. And they're a much better defensive unit when Don McNeil is in the game. Third down and three, Dallas. The ball at their own 32-yard line. James Jones, 23. And as a setback for Dallas. Penny White. Fires. Oh, my flag gosh. is down at the line of scrimmage, but Cosby does not hold on. It would have been first down. But a flag is down at the line of scrimmage. Well... Here's referee Pat Haggerty. How about that? That'll get the first Dallas. I didn't see movement. Perhaps somebody lined up in the neutral zone. Number 77 defense lining up in the neutral zone. Oh, yeah. First down. Good eye, Jake. DJ Dua, he'll go to the Pro Bowl. Hasn't played that much. He was actually on injury, injured, not injured reserve, but missed the first five games. Hasn't played that well <laughs> because of shoulder and knee problems, and his teammates are kidding him. He said when you get to Hawaii, perhaps you can make the cut over there. <laughs> he didn't start tonight, as a matter of fact. On first and ten. Danny White. Oh, Danny. Oh, Danny. Danny. Rob Brzezinski, who labors almost anonymously for these Dolphins, but they will tell you that he is one of their most valuable players. So tough against the run, Brzezinski. Danny White was uh, as lucky as you can get on that pass. I don't even think he looked to see if uh, Tony was covered. If he had, I doubt very seriously if he would have thrown the ball. You see, that was, his, that was his checkoff man out there, right? When you look downfield, you can't find what you want, check off. 8.58 remaining in the third quarter. Dolphins leading the Cowboys 14 to nothing. Danny White will look over a second down and 10. You don't get the feeling that Dallas is going to grind it out on them, do you? they got to have a big play. Danny White watch Tony Hill on the right side. 30-second clock, kicking down to five. They'll have to hurry. They get it off. Uh, they shouldn't have. Maybe they would have been better if they had. Good defensive play. Bob Baumauer playing hurt tonight. And the loss is back to the 30-yard line. Tony Dorsett had nowhere to go. Dallas looking flat. When you see it, a team make those kind of mistakes in the last game of the season, they're either flat or somebody's really screwed up there in that offensive line. We're re Don, and we're reaching the point in the game where you have to scrap the game plan. Obviously, the game plan right. is to run the ball. And we're just about at the time when you're going to say, the heck with the game plan, we're going to throw the ball downfield. They're almost in a four-down situation. They might have a hard time finding a game plan tonight. Third and 16, shotgun. Crowd loving the defensive performance of Miami tonight. Oh. Danny oh. White goes down. He was in trouble all the way. They had good coverage. The 26 yard line. They had good coverage. If he wasn't in trouble, he expected to be in trouble because he was <laughs> acting like he was in trouble. <laughs> Now they take one look at the coverage downfield. There was good coverage, and all of a sudden, the big forms of A.J. Dewey, 77, and Doug Better, 75, were all over it. Danny White stays on to punt. Holden Walker settles back at the Miami Dolphin 28-yard line. There's Walker. Danny White is low. You can run it back. Good defense. Good oh, wait a minute. And Holden Walker shakes loose. Diossi was down there. Thought he had him. But Swain had his arms on Walker. He was able to spin loose. Holden Walker was. And get back to the 31-yard line. Seen a scene that's been played out so many times in pro football. Young Gary Hogaboom walking up and down in front of Tom Landry. Trying to get his attention. There's no question in my mind. He's saying... Well, look, I'm still here. Don't forget me. And meanwhile, Danny White struggling through a very tough evening. First down and 10, Miami. They lead 14 to nothing, 7.35 remaining in the third quarter. <laughs> Over the middle. Uh -huh. 
This is Mark Clayton. And Clayton through to the first down near the 38-yard line. It'll bring up second down and three. I don't think we have to worry about Miami not playing for this game. OJ, they seem to be sharp. They're doing what they do well. They throw that ball. They mix up with us. They haven't run that many times, but they've run a few times. I tell you, the main thing on their minds is I don't know any team that enjoys going to Denver to play, especially Denver in January. It's got to be a tough place to go and play, and that's where they may end up. That's a possibility that Miami's trying to avert. Duper now three receptions on the night. Clayton has caught two. He's at 71 on the year. That's, by the way, a season record for the Dolphins. Tony Nathan held short of the first down by about a yard. This was the quarter where Dallas had the win, if that was going to be of any significance at all. And they have not really been able to use that. Actually, I think the win has died down a little bit. Feels that way. To remark on that, it seems yeah. to have died considerably at the opening of the game. It was really brisk from the open end here in the Orange Bowl. As you can see, the streamers now just kind of sagging there. Big Pete Johnson, number 46, is in the game. He has the lowest average per carry for any back who's carried the ball over 60 times this year, only 2.4 yards. And one of the reasons why, because he normally carries the ball on plays like this. Even oh, wow. but he did it. Good play. Ron Fellows up there quickly. And he should have carried it. He should have. Yeah, they gave it to the wrong guy, didn't they? Ron Fellows, a busy night. He had one interception, gave the Cowboys a turnover in the early going of the game. They couldn't do anything with it. But this time, Fellows makes the play, and Reggie Roby comes on to punt on fourth down. Gary would... Allen back at the 20-yard line of Dallas. A lot of respect. Gary Allen showing Reggie Roby. Roby kicking into that slight breeze now, but he's still giving him about 50 yards. The ebb of, and flow of the game, you would think it's time for Dallas to do something. You would think that. <laughs> turnover and Allen has to step forward to make the fair catch but it's Dallas with good field position first down and ten they bring out the offensive unit uncharacteristically short punt for Roby Miami's defense playing awfully well tonight but Miami's Dallas's offense totally ineffectual and looking for a spark first down and ten the ball at Dallas's 28 yard line Door set. Sprints to the outside. And up close to a first down in the arms of Lyle Blackwood. And just short by about a half a yard. And we'll pause five seconds and allow our friends and stations all over the country to identify themselves. Channel 10, WPLG, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. Back in the Orange Bowl in Miami. 5-10 remaining in the third quarter. The Dolphins over the Dallas Cowboys. 14 to nothing. A couple of touchdown passes from... Duke uh, Marino to Clayton in the first quarter and then in the third quarter a shot to Bruce Hardy and for Dallas if they lose tonight the playoffs are over for them any possibility Miami of course playing for home field throughout the AFC playoffs and a win tonight will give it to them that was Dorsett on second and short yardage and he is held short of the first down Bob Baumauer a big tall nose tackle you don't find a many nose tackles at 6'5 but he is such a good athlete. Don, I think you were with me when we did the Superstars here three or four years ago, and we were amazed at his athletic ability. They ran what the, uh, the last event where they had to run and jump. What do you call that? Obstacle course. The course. obstacle course. That cat did it all, man. He was, he was right there with the rest of them, jumping hurdles. They're going to bring it out, even though Dorsett appeared to be stopped short of the first. By that much. It'll be third down. 452 remaining in the third quarter. The Cowboys had a draft choice this year. I would love to see run that obstacle course. Carl Lewis. Carl Lewis, that's right. <laughs> they did, didn't they? <laughs> Again, this game having many ramifications tonight. Far up in the northeast of the country, the Giants players are sitting around, I'm sure, either at home or together, along with head coach Bill Parcells, who has to be considered a contender for NFC coach of the year they've got two bags packed already Dallas loses tonight and they're on their way to Los Angeles to meet the Rams in the wild card game third down 
Nobody turned up. Nobody turned up is right. And uh, the flag goes down, and Danny White really <laughs> gets pounded. This could be brought back. There might have been pass interference against Tony Hill. Uh, it could well have been. Tony Hill, who I think was supposed to turn up Phil, ran into Fulton Walker. And Timmy Newsom was trying to work free down the secondary, and I think somebody bumped him. Holding. So the interception, that was a total foul up. Somebody had to get deep. Danny White uh, kept blaming that one on him. No one was there. Certainly not where they should have been. Well, you either do one of two things, though, Frank. If they're in a fourth down situation, if your guy's not there, you're going to know it real quick when you run a play action pass. So if he's not there, throw it away, come back. Right on fourth. Defensive holding, number 77. They call it on A.J. Dewey. And it will be first down Dallas. They keep it alive at the 43-yard line. Dewey, one of the great ball players, but the other players around the league who votes who goes to the uh, Pro Bowl is going to have to pay a little closer attention to who's playing and who's not playing next year. Pro Bowl, of course, January 27th will bring it to you, and the players are decided by both the players and the coaches by vote. On first down. <laughs> White and gets it in there to the tight end, Doug Cosby, and he rolls up close to a first down. And, of course... Pro Bowl starting one week after we'll be bringing you the Super Bowl January the 20th, 4 o'clock Eastern Time. We're looking forward to it. We certainly hope you are. Who will be playing, Don? Boy. Wouldn't San Francisco love it? Two they teams. Stay home. But it's a long, tough road, and it's all sudden death throughout the playoffs. 3.40 and the clock is moving in the third quarter. Second down, short yardage. comes down with it at the 25-yard line. First down, Dallas. All right. They got a little spark going here now. No time for Dallas. Boy, this has been the extent of the offense. Danny White to this man, Doug Cosby, in his sixth year out of Santa Clara, third year as a starter, and the leading receiver for Dallas coming into tonight, and he's done nothing to hurt that. And the rest of the offense has been P.U. That means not, not up to snuff, not, not what you would like to see or what you expected to see. Not from Dallas. That's right. At the 25-yard line, first down and 10. Double setbacks. Newsom 30. James Jones 23. Dallas's deepest penetration. To the corner. Danny White looking for the corner and Tony Hill. And the coverage by William Judson. Good coverage it was. Danny White would have had to put it in there absolutely perfect. And this is not his night for perfection. Almost appeared they had a little inside-out coverage on Hill. Had one of the Blackwood boys covered him if he went back to the, if he if he cut back to the inside. And Judson's been around the ball pretty much tonight, hasn't he? He played a pretty good game. That Miami defense playing well tonight. Yeah, how about that one? In 40 games, they've now been held scoreless through three quarters. Tendency to credit the lack of efficiency to Dallas's offense, but Miami is getting a fine performance tonight from that defensive unit. Dallas held 159 yards thus far. Second and 10. Dorsett. Nothing happening there. He turns right back into Bill Barnett. And down he goes. A gain of a couple. It'll be third down long. Third and eight. Once again, that's obviously a part of the game plan. But one of the things besides the Miami defense that's uh, handicapping Tony is this surface. As you can see, every time he attempts to make a a violent cut. He slipped. He did it again that time, didn't he? Ron Springs comes in. Tony Dorsett goes out on third down and eight. Ron Springs, who really was replaced three weeks ago by Timmy Newsom, good receiver. And he works well out of the backfield, does Springs. 73 receptions a year ago. Ron Springs. <laughs> oh. That will not make the highlights, or maybe it will. That will make the highlights. Well, that was the play. That was a design play. What he's supposed to do is throw it back to Danny White. And it looked like Danny White was asleep. Yeah. Fourth down and eight. Tom Landry making a decision on the sidelines. 
And on fourth and eight, the Cowboys will keep their offensive unit in. I agree with you, Don. I think that play was designed. It may not have been designed to, to happen exactly the way it did, but if Danny no. White would have been alert, I think he could have caught the ball. Yeah, well. Well, with 158, Cowboys well, decide to eschew the field goal. They're going to need it somewhere down the line. If they're going they're to win. trailing 14 to nothing. And Danny White says, can we quiet this group down? And that will only bring on some more of the tumultuous war. And now it's being explained to, by referee Pat Haggerty. There's nothing we can do about it. Can't you please get the play off? And you can't penalize the crowd. Well, I, you know, I think if it was one or two yards to go, maybe you would go for it on fourth down, but... With the score being seven, I mean 14 to nothing, you're gonna have to get three points to win eventually. But did I not tell you the stadium will now start to really rock? We saw that happen up in or was it in the Denver Seattle game? Finally they stepped out of the shotgun, went back into the tee. We saw it happen yesterday. St. Louis got out of the shotgun, went back into the tee because the offensive lineman can hear the changes and the signals much better from the tee than they can from the shotgun you think that guy we just looked at painted his teeth yellow <laughs> fourth down and eight four <laughs> wide receivers in Duriel Harris joins Tony Hill Doug Donnelly and Mike Rimpro Danny will wait him out won't do any good and if I was Danny I would wait it's all or nothing for the Cowboys and the last thing you need is a mistake because you can't hear the call. On fourth down and eight, the play has been called a long time ago. The defense has had plenty of time to look over the offensive set of the Cowboys. Of course, there'll be movement. That's what Danny White's concerned about. Now, he's going to have to move his receivers. <laughs> One or two or more will go in motion. Don Shula trying to quiet this crowd. Forget it. And the Lord I'll say it. They may, they may listen to this man. May the Lord say, let there be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> now the stadium announcement is being made. The home team, by the way, cannot be penalized for the actions of the crowd. That was a myth for many years. They cannot be. Fourth and eight. It's louder, if anything. Danny White, 15 of 24, 131 yards, one interception. Fourth and eight. Ooh, oh, that's, that's a flag. Flag. Oh, You're going to get a slide out there. Yeah. Yeah. First down at the one-yard line. Doriel Harris, the former Dolphin, gets the call. I believe it was one of the Blackwoods, Glenn Blackwood, who gave him a little grab. I don't know whether he would have caught it or not. But I've seen Doriel Harris make many circus catches here when he played for the Dolphins for those many years. I'll tell you, this is just frustration we're seeing now on the part of the Cowboys. A little, uh, a little uh, what they call take back from Doriel Harris, you know, when you get traded from a team. Now, uh, let's watch it. Bottom of the screen. That's Doriel Harris splitting the defenders. You see Lyle Blackwood grabbing him. Who grabbed him. Blackwood, the elder of the Blackwood brothers. Boy, this dude has been around. Came here in 81 after four years at Baltimore, a year at Seattle, three at Cincinnati, and has really found a home with his brother Gwen. In the ebb and flow, it was time for the Cowboys to do something, and they did. They did, or the Blackwood did. <laughs> Somebody did. Well, it was done. The other two drives by the Dolphins were helped by penalties. Certainly so I should miss me. Part of the game. Darrell Harris traded to Cleveland this year, but he had great years right on this very same field. And he has the Cowboys close to being back into the game. Newsom. Yes. Down. He's 232 pounds. He gets it into the end zone, and the Cowboys draw within a conversion of seven points. Looked like Jim Taylor on that run. Huh? Put the head down and uh, low. I'll tell you. You get it low and let's go. 
He's big and strong. They brought him up as a sixth round pick in 1980. Put him at fullback for a year. Then they put him behind Dorsett at tailback and obviously didn't get into much play. This year they moved him back to fullback where he really naturally belongs. And he became a starter hit around Springs three weeks ago. And he has put the Cowboys back into the football game. But the big call against Lyle Blackwood working against Doriel Harris, the interference call. Septian makes it a 14-7 game with 1.47 remaining in the third quarter. And for the Cowboys, so much on the line and a little more than a quarter to get it done. The Dallas offense translates. It's a fourth and eight decision on the part of Tom Landry with a little help from the pass interference call at the one-yard line to a touchdown that puts them right back into this. The lead of the Dolphins now cut to 14-7. To Fulton Walker is back for the kick of Rafael Septien. Short kick. Walker will have an opportunity from the seventh. <laughs> Walker hammered at the 24-yard line. Down he goes. And guess who? Bill Bates. That kid deserves to go to the Pro Bowl. Say, Victor Scott was the guy that tore up all that interference that was going in there. He was paid the price and knocked out about three of the blockers. Bill Bates stays on. And things have gotten a little tighter for Giants fans, Giants players, coaching staff, owners. They're looking on tonight. If Dallas wins tonight, they are out of the playoffs. If Dallas loses, they go to meet the Los Angeles Rams in the wild card game. They got two bags packed, but they didn't lock the last suitcase. They just don't. 74,139 jammed into the Orange Bowl tonight. Watching the Miami Dolphins lead the Cowboys with 137 remaining in the third quarter, 14-7. Miami first and 10, the ball inside their 25-yard line. Draw play to Nathan. Uh -huh. and a good defensive play. Smerrick, who plays so often on the pass situation for Dallas in place of John Dutton. Quick look at the scoring drive. The key to it, a fourth and eight call. Landry deciding to forego the field goal. The pass interference, Duriel Harris in the end zone, resulting in... The ball being placed first down goal to go with the one, and from there Timmy Newsom took it in. And that, what were you going to say? And with every scoring drive tonight, a long yellow line. That's it. Loss of one by Nathan. It'll be second down and eleven. Moreno. What a Nathan. This one he does not handle. Bill Bates out there on the coverage. The first time in quite a while, this Cowboy defensive front four has placed some pressure on Marino. They got to rest a little bit. Dallas will be working against the breeze that still continues to blow here in the Orange Bowl, even though it is not as strong as it was at the beginning of the game. Now let's see if Dallas can keep these Dolphin receivers out of the middle. They're down at 11. They haven't been able to do it all night. Dallas into their 4-0 defense. Four down linemen. Bates and Clink scale play it like linebackers. Marino batted away. All right. Ed Tutal Jones, his second bat of the night. 16 on the year for Big Ed. Dexter Clean still did a good job of staying with Jimmy Cephalo, who was running the cross pattern. And with 42 seconds remaining in the third quarter, clock stop, Reggie Roby will have to kick against the breeze. Uh, that means that Gary Allen can await the ball near the 35-yard line of Dallas. They should get good field position. First glimmer, I think that might be the first or second time that they've stopped them in three downs tonight. Cowboys have always been a second-half team. Cowboys not good on their return teams. Their longest punt return of the year, 17 yards. Their longest kickoff return, 34 yards. Here's Reggie Roby. Oh, he's, he kicked one. Beautiful punt. Allen at the 20. And Allen moves out with a fine return to the 34-yard line. 57-yard effort by Reggie Roby, the Pro Bowl punter. And out comes Danny White once again. Not bad numbers, 15, 24, 131 yards, one interception. Not a lot of yardies tonight. We'll have 28 seconds remaining here in the third quarter to work with the breeze. And then they'll turn it around, he'll go against it. 
34 yard line, first and 10 Dallas. They'll work from the eye. Right, tell me about that one. No one was open. I tell you, Don McNeil was all over Doug Donnelly. And I think that may have been his primary receiver, and he just dumped the ball over Doug Cosby's head. Well, It'll be second was. down and ten. You see him talking to somebody back there. Ed Ed Jones didn't make the Pro Bowl this year. He's been in there so frequently. Well, you know, he had seven sacks, and they said it was a subpar year for him, but somehow they don't pay enough attention to those block passes. Second and ten. Anyway, Cosby's open. Down with the ball at the 45-yard line. First down, Dallas are in Miami territory. 21-yard reception. And the final seconds of the third quarter will tick off before they get another playoff. That was the same kind of play that he caught a touchdown. I mean, it's a big pass on that last touchdown drive. Same pattern. We'll be back after this from our stations. One final period of play, perhaps, for the Dallas Cowboys. They are down 14 to 7. They'll try to change that. They lose tonight and is home for the playoffs. A win tonight, and they go on. They'll host the Los Angeles Rams in the wild card game next weekend. The Cowboys have a first and 10 near the 45-yard line of the Miami Dolphins as we begin the fourth quarter. Dorsett. Nice. Nice. This thing inside the 35. Dallas first down. Nice little counter move. It was, it was almost like a draw play. Where he went back like he was going to throw and then hand the ball off behind him to Dorsett. That was a nice move by Danny White. Dallas struggling all year. They lost two to the Giants. They lost two to the Redskins. They lost to Buffalo. And they lost once to St. Louis. Trying to stay in this one. He's trying to follow Glenn Titans. <laughs> yeah. I don't blame him, do you? <laughs> I don't blame him for yeah, not I'm waiting fine. for Glenn. Yeah, so Glenn, I can't wait any longer. <laughs> Ball just inside the 35-yard line. Dallas first and 10. Dorsett tries to work to the outside. Doug Betters trips him up. Gain of about two. It'll be second down and eight. Not the kind of year you need for a Tony Dorsett when your offensive line is hurt throughout the year as we look at Gil Brandt, who has brought so many obscure players in to this franchise he was there when tom landry became the first coach the cowboys ever had along with tech shram you think of people like drew pearson who retired this past season free agent second and eight danny white loses the ball away from the center falls on it he's back to the original line of scrimmage it'll be third down and ten We'll take a look at the halftime numbers and then we'll translate through the third quarter for you. Miami pulling away and the edge in yardage, even though the lead has been cut to 14 to 7. That's through the third quarter. And the records have been falling tonight. Dan Marino having another big night. Sort of misleading uh, all the records that have been falling because most of those records by the Miami Dolphins offense and Dan Marino because the Cowboys have played an excellent defensive game here tonight. They have over the past three games. They have played superb defense. I mentioned it earlier. 25 sacks in the last three games. Something happened to them after that loss to Buffalo. Perhaps embarrassment. Oh. Third and ten. Danny White has it batted away and he is really nailed. Coming in on the blitz is Paul Lankford, but his arm was in motion. It will be, however, fourth down. I would say they wouldn't go for the fourth down situation here. They've got their one touchdown. Oh, no, not now. Now, if they bring it in, try to put it out way back. And let the defense play their game. They've been playing well tonight. Miami, how many times this season, one wonders, have they been held to 14 points in three quarters? Not many. One of the most explosive offensive teams, and in many respects, the most explosive offensive team in the history of the game. If you want to consider yardage and score. Mark Clayton will drop. He'll just be guessing with Danny White. Mark Clayton, by the way, was the punt return man for the Dolphins a year ago. This year he's, of course, turned into sensational all-pro receiver. Danny looking for the corner. 
And it is not what he wanted. Not too bad. At just about the 11 yard line. And keep in mind the line of scrimmage was the 31. So there's a gain of 20 on the punt. We'll be back. Prior to tonight, the Miami Dolphins have been held to 14 points on three occasions in 15 outings. And in all three of those occasions, they went on to win. They lead now 14 to 7. No 14 points. Of course, going into the fourth quarter, they've been held to that three times thus far in the season. They won all of those games. Woody Bennett, the flag is down. Linkscale, the safety man, had penetrated deep. Ed Jones was there, no place to go for Woody Bennett. And the Dolphins now, they are beginning to commit the errors. I don't think I'd take that. <laughs> Me either. Yeah, I don't want to give them any more downs. They got a long way to go anyway. Don Shula, I think he takes great pride in the fact that his team is each year usually the team that is least penalized. Man is fair, decent, honest with the players, and he does not tolerate errors. We have holding number 74. Offense declined. Yeah. Second down. Cleveland Green over the right side. He's done a great job filling in for Eric Loxo, who went out in September with a knee injury, as has Roy Foster over in the left guard position for Bob Kuchenberg. We talked about that earlier. But when your quarterback only gets sacked 12 times in 15 games, you know that the offensive line is doing something right, even though you have a quarterback that can get rid of the ball so quickly. Second and 10. Fifteen to the seventeen yard line. You might be wondering why Dallas declined that penalty. It was only have been halfway half the distance to the goal line, and it would have been first down and fifteen as opposed to second down and ten. And that doesn't make much difference to Marino. The Dolphins are a lot like the 49ers in that if they get penalized on first down, they don't really think much of it. <laughs> they figure three downs, they can get twenty yards with their passing game. Nathan got six. It'll be third down and four. Matt Moore, Mark Clayton split to the left. Marino. Oh, beautiful. Oh, that's what a great, 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 great play. play. Great defensive play by Ron Fellows. You bet. Who has made superb plays all night long. That was really free. He stayed, kept his, his body away from the receiver's body. Let's look at it again from Marino's point of view. Didn't get it really rushed too, too terribly bad. But look at this. Fellows comes across, knocks that ball around. That's a nice move, Ron. One of the first times I've seen Marino really wind up to throw one. He usually just snaps it from right behind his head. Probably the kick. He has that prevailing breeze. And Gary Allen showing deep respect. <laughs> yeah. He's way back at the Cowboys' 30-yard line. And Roby will kick from about the eighth. Giving him about 65 yards here. <laughs> yes, Jeff Toe is providing the snap. The crowd loves it. <laughs> he needed every enough. foot of it. Gary Allen. And a flag oh. is down. Uh -huh. It's Gary Allen. And I think it's going to be on Bill Bates. Yeah. That's, that's two big penalties on Bates tonight. That's a big one because they could have the ball near midfield. You bet. And that will nullify a fine return by Gary Allen. And the Cowboys will be backed up. Boy, what a putt. Punt. 54 yards from the line of scrimmage. He was about oh, 12 to 15 yards we behind that. Number 40 on the return. First down. That hurts. Bill Bates, second major penalty tonight. But Dallas gets the football back. 11:49 remaining in the game, and they trail by seven. 49 remaining in the game. The Dolphins over the Cowboys, 14 to seven. Two fine defensive efforts tonight. Neither offense what they could be or what was expected tonight. Even though the Dolphins have moved the ball considerably more than Dallas. On first and ten, Dorsett. And Dorsett out over the 40-yard line to the 41 beyond the block of Glenn Titanser. 
He'll get six out of that. It'll be second down and four. Notice Tony Hill is walking off the field. He tried to make a block. He appeared to have injured himself. That's certainly not going to help, is it? That looks like a wind knocked out of me. Let's look at Tony Hill, number 80. Comes in to make a little crackback block. <laughs> that's Pretty not his forte. Uh oh, yeah. he says, what was that? Oh, I, oh that's a, could be a right shoulder, too. Now that's what he heard earlier, remember? Second down and four, Dorsett. Getting it out close to the 42-yard line. Dorsett. Dorsett to the 45-yard line. He'll be short of the first down by about a yard. Hit by Brzezinski and Doug Fetters over the left side of the Dolphins' defense. Well, number 86, Dario Harris, is now in the game for the Cowboys, and he should be the most motivated player on the field. He used to play for this Cowboy team, and they would have traded me away with... with um, the Dan Marino, yeah. you know, yeah, coming to Dolphin. my team. I would love to stay there. Yeah. We have a Dolphin that is down. And we have been unable to identify him as the Dolphin players have surrounded him. But the medical team has come out. And it number 73. That's Bob Baumauer. He came into the night, as I mentioned several times, playing on a very sore ankle. And now they are taking a very concerned look at Bob Baumauer. Good athlete, as I mentioned earlier. Good yeah. against the run, also good against the pass. They're working high up on that arm under that shoulder pad, and they sure can't afford to lose him. Meanwhile, we'll try to get a report on Tony Hill's condition, who went out just a few minutes ago. This game takes its toll. We'll look again. Right side of your screen, number 65, Kurt Peterson blocking Bob Baumauer. That head snap. Uh -huh. Brzezinski, number 59, came in to make the tackle. He hit him and snapped his head. Tony Hill, apparently it was nothing severe. Perhaps the wind knocked out of him. And meanwhile, Bob Baumauer is very slow getting up. He'll be assisted from the field. How many times does a player get hurt when his own teammate comes in on the pile like that? A lot. A lot of you saw him stretching out the neck. Hey, when you get... There, I'll come <laughs> off on my own, says Bob yeah, yeah. A lot but of fighters have said that. I can go another round. Mm -hmm. you get, get that shot to the head, the next snaps back, and it feels like electricity all through your body. Third down, less than a yard for the Dallas Cowboys. 11-22 remaining in the game. They start the clock again. Short yardage offense for the Cowboys. The three tight ends are in. Nilsson, he'll have the first down. Close to the 47-yard line. The Cowboys keep it alive. That was Ron Springs, brother. No, it was Newsom. Tony Hill back in the game. 47-yard line, first down. Strange game. Really is. It's kind of offensive teams, explosive teams down. And the crowd seems kind of flat, too. They're like waiting for something to happen. It's one of those kind of deals. They came in with high anticipation of offensive fireworks. What they're seeing is a struggling defensive game. Like that. Dorsett spins out of the grass. Oh, oh he, he slips again. Once again. Lyle Blackwood. He gets away from Barnett. But Blackwood is there. Now, with Tony, as you saw, he did an excellent job of getting away from that first contact and he had a one-on-one -on -one situation that he would normally win out here on the outside but once again the turf gave way on him he's really had trouble with that almost every run tonight it looked to be a mix-up in the backfield that time too i don't know what it was but he was bumped in around there they had a little bit difficulty in finding a place to line up all right second down long the dolphins like to blitz on it also we'll cover it from the end zone you can watch it develop here they come. This was on, and White read it, trying to get it to Tony Hill, but too much pressure. And it was Don McNeil running stride for stride with Tony Hill. And this is certainly a different Dolphin defense with this man playing. They do have problems without him. They traded Gerald Small to Atlanta, the starting right cornerback a year ago. And, of course, they counted heavily on Don McNeil being able to return from a year off of Achilles' injury. He couldn't. He was injured in the second game. 
And they've had to go with Judson on the right side, who had played on the left side last year. And they've had to go with Paul Langford, and they have not been too happy with that over the course of the season. McNeil does help. Third down and 10 for them defense for Miami. 9.39 remaining in the game. Dolphins on top, 14-7. Standing oh. tight. And incomplete. With Duriel Harris, he almost made a circus catch, and once again, as we've seen so often, the turf slipped and Duriel Harris went down. Right there. Yep. Yeah. That was almost a good effort. A spectacular catch. Dolphins now, I'll tell you, they're pulling out all the stops. You wonder whether they were going to play tonight. They had it all locked up except the home field advantage. They bring this man back, Mark Clayton, putting back on punts. He was a superb punt returner a year ago. Had a 60-yard touchdown against the Colts a year ago. Well, he can bring it back. Fair catch. Called for by Clayton, but Glenn Blackwood stepped in front of it. And they will bring it back and mark it at the 23-yard out. I think I would complain, too, all that extra unnecessary contact. <laughs> Actually, it was Clayton who called for the fair catch, and it was Blackwood, Glenn Blackwood, who stepped in front and took the ball away from Clayton. They're going to get it sorted out, but I think they are right. I heard one of the Cowboys say he called for a fair catch. He had a fair catch. There you go. But another player caught it. The ball is dead at that spot. And dead at the spot where it was caught. Tom Land. Concerned. Yes, he is. He's had a struggling year. He started with a quarterback controversy. His offensive line was decimated. Controversy within the team. Problems for the year. 17 of the last 18 years, the Dallas Cowboys have been in the playoffs. They trail 14 to 7. That's the fair catch that I mentioned a moment ago, called by Mark Blake. And then Glenn Blackwood stepped in front of him and said, hey, I can put something on this. But they mark it. Where he caught the ball. It'll be first down and 10. The Dolphins at their own 23-yard line. It's not a penalty. It should be. Tricking them. Reno shut down here in the second half. He's 6 of 12, 47 yards, and the one touchdown. Marino changing up. Woody Bennett. And perhaps he should have changed to something else. A gain of about a yard and a half. It'll be second and eight. Tonight on Nightline, he could be the next leader of the Soviet Union. Now he's on an important state visit to Great Britain. Who is Mikhail Gorbachev? That tonight on Nightline, following your late local news. It's a good move by Jim Jeffcoat that time. That was a perfect example of Dallas's flex defense, where he lines up his defensive end, moves into the inside. Met him head up. Second down and eight. The ball resting right at the 25-yard line. Inside nine minutes remaining in the game. And perhaps the Cowboys see it. Over the middle. Randy White pressuring. <laughs> trying to get it to Nathan and Randy White. Showing the discipline of a great pro. He pulled up after the ball was delivered. That was Bill Bates making the play on Tony Nathan. You can see Danny uh, Randy White's jersey is... Yeah. About the dirtiest one out there, but he did. he says, I just want to bump him. I didn't hit him hard. <laughs> well, the uh, Cowboy safeties are beginning to take some liberties on these turn-ins and turn-outs, and it's about time that the Dolphins put one up for the bomb, put that bomb out there. Marino, his last four attempts have been incomplete. Third down and eight. Term, but that was really an acrobatic interception. They really needed something like that. Take a look at it. The receiver, I think, is covered anyway. It appears as if he had an opportunity to jump up. So that's jump ball right there. But look at that interception. That is amazing. Everson Walls on that more. <laughs> look at Everson. Look at Michael down. Run the ball, Michael. And he slips. 
The second interception of Marino tonight. Earlier, Ron Fellows got one, gave the Cowboys an opportunity, almost at the same identical field position. They did not capitalize. They desperately need it now. Dorsett, reverse. Tony Hill. Good runner. But the Dolphins straight out, and they hold Tony Hill to a gain of about seven. Run out of bounds by 69 Bombers. There's no need to save anything. They're pulling them all out. Reverses. I bet you they're trying to throw that pass. They were trying to throw to Danny White a while ago. What do you got going up for us now, Tom? He says. It's a good call. Good thing number 53, Jay Brophy, a rookie linebacker. He wasn't fool, and he forced Hill to keep it outside. Could let him turn it up for a bigger game. Fuller likes linebackers. His top four picks for linebackers this year. Jay Brophy has filled in admirably for A.J. Dewey throughout the season. Second down and three. Back into the eye. They like to throw from this. White. Donnelly. Or rather, Renfro. And he'll have the first down. Tom's getting serious when he puts his glasses on. Man. One of the few passes that have been completed in Don McNeil's territory tonight. Of course, it was a very safe pass. First down, goal to go. Ball at the eight-yard line. Dolphins bring in a four-down line now. Barnett joins Baumauer, Fetters, and Bo Camper. You know, Giant fans getting a little nervous up in the Northeast. The Cowboys win tonight. That's the end of the season for the Giants. But the Cowboys lose. The Giants become the wild card and move into the playoffs. Dorsett. Good running. Good hard running as Dorsett is inside the five to the four. It'll be second down goal. The irony of the Giants and the Cowboys, John McCullough, as you just mentioned, Frank, the Giants have lost their last two ball games, but they've beaten Dallas twice this year. Well, they wondered about that themselves. Yeah, I bet they are. They're waiting on the team that they've beaten twice to lose so they can go. Have not looked as good as they certainly would like to these last two weeks. Or it's at 60 yards on 19 tough carries. <laughs> But they have been all tough carries for Dorsett this year, running behind this line that has been patchwork almost every week. That's why I think it's one of Tony's finest years. Second and goal. Oh, all right. This is a touchdown of the night, and we are a conversion away from a tie ball game. A 7.28 remaining in the fourth period. Unpack one bag. Don Shula trying to avoid a down-the-line confrontation that could be possible with Denver in Denver should the Miami Dolphins lose tonight. Had him a good hole here, didn't he? <laughs> Very nice hole. This is just a power play. You see every guy oh, up front take the guy in front of him. Blocked by Rafferty. He is the only member of that offensive line that has started every game, the center. And he turned Baumauer to the outside. Newsom smelled it and drilled it in. Herb Scott had a good block there, too. He took him right across the hole. Set the end to tie it up. <laughs> Just a tie in at 14, a 728 remaining. <laughs> things are a little quieter here at the Orange Bowl. The Cowboys have hung in there. They've done it mostly on defense. We'll be back in a moment. Colton Walker has gone to the Miami Dolphin dressing room, and they are looking at a possible fracture of the cheekbone. That's the word we received. Meanwhile, Joe Carter, the rookie from Alabama, will drop back where Fulton Walker ordinarily would be. We've already watched Mark Clayton back on punts where Walker would be. Carter has not returned any kickoffs thus far this season for the Dolphins. 7.28 remaining. We're tied at 14. Septian against the breeze. Nice bounce. You gotta cover it, Carter. You gotta cover it. That ball is free. Down in the end zone. So that'll be the touchback. He'll come out to the 20. And Dan Marino has been intercepted twice tonight. Held short. Here in the second half. And only twice in this young man's career. And it has been spectacular and sparkling as he's been held under 50%. And this has to go down as certainly one of his weakest showings, if not the weakest. Well, he had two interceptions, uh, and there were two other occasions where the ball could have very well had been intercepted. 
Woody Bennett, single setback. But they are explosive. On the outside, Duper and Clayton can strike from anywhere. Marino dumps it off to Bennett. Here comes Klingscale, and he makes a good oh. open field tackle. Tell you, he's a tough cookie, that Klingscale. He's around that ball. Well, that's the only thing the Dolphins are going to be able to do this quarter because the Cowboys have done a super job of, turn, of closing off the center of the football field, and that's what was burning them earlier in the football game. There's still 7.09 remaining in the game. We are tied at 14. Interestingly enough, should this go five quarters and end in a tie, both teams would achieve what they came out here to do with a victory, and that is Dallas would get into the playoffs. The Giants are gone, and Miami would also get the home field throughout the AFC playoffs. Tony Nathan. What a nice job by keeping on your feet, Tony. A great job by Randy White breaking through there. Nathan held short of the first down by a couple. I'm a fan of Nathan. I think Nathan runs the ball as well as anybody from the yard of scrimmage to five yards down the field. He runs that real well in that for those tight quarters. I've seen him get loose a couple of times tonight when it appeared they had him. That time Randy White had a shot at him and was that Jeff Goat too? You know, I'm not so sure, but as I've watched Miami all year, it seems like they've almost constricted their offense tonight. They're not they throw maybe one or two times, and that was back in the first quarter, deep to Clayton and Duper. Right now, they look over third and two, and they'll work from the shotgun. <laughs> Andy White, he got back. White, Duper, down with the ball at the 45-yard line. First down, Miami. Michael Downs on the stop. That was a 17-yard pickup, and... Duper with that great speed. You have to lay off. Ron Fellows way off of Duper. This man was part of the 400-meter NCAA relay championship team as a junior. Great speed. Well, on turn-ins like that, you need your linebackers, or if you have six defensive backs, whoever's playing that linebacker position taking the, uh, that pass away. It's pretty tough for the deep back to take that pass away. Duper now, 71 receptions on the year. He's had four tonight. First and 10, Miami. Nathan. And Nathan upended. Good defensive play once again. Dexter Klinkscale and Dennis Thurman. Both of them were there. Really surprised at how many players we've seen slip down tonight. They just seemed to feel that we were out there before the game and it did seem a little bit wet, but it's amazing how many times these guys have slipped, slipped down. Clock beginning to tick away. Heading down to five minutes remaining in the game. Could this be an Uwe von Schaumann night? I doubt if any New York Giants have turned this one off for their fans up in New York. Second down and long. Marino with a lot of time. There's the bomb, but it'll be overthrown. Trying to get it to Clayton and running stride for stride. Everson Walls, and on the other end of it, Marino pays for it, and he gets up limping. Von Shaman. They might have to call on him. They're not close enough yet. But he has suffered through a miserable year for a kicker. He's got a bad knee. Let's see if or he has wears a brace yeah. on that. Well, Jeff wear. Coat got him right on that knee. Oh, that's about the only way that mm. that 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 Anderson brace that he wears uh, can protect you if you get hit from the side. But it doesn't do much protection when you get hit front on like that. Third down and six. The ball at the 49-yard line of the Dolphins from the shotgun. Crowd getting into it. They're on their feet. Marino, Nathan, first down, and what a struggle Nathan had getting off the line of scrimmage. Bill Bates was battling him all the way, and Marino just sizzled it in there where Nathan almost had to catch it. Well, Bates was trying to do the right thing. He was trying to keep him from getting over the middle. Didn't quite make it, though, but watch this pass. You'll see the pass and the completion right here. Talking about a bullet. <laughs> Bates and Nathan here. Bumped and bumped along the line of scrimmage, and Nathan was able to pull loose. And Nathan has really been a factor in tonight's play offensively for the Dolphins, both receiving and rushing. The first down is at the 44 of the Cowboys. That boy can throw Nathan that again. Ball. And hurtling inside the 40 will be a gain of six. Dexter Klinkscale on the stop. Very nice. Shaman, I mentioned earlier, his long of the year, 37 yards. 
His career best is 53 yards, but that was back in 79 when he was a rookie. He's kicked from far out three times this year, 53 yards twice, 58 yards once. He's missed all three. The Interesting Dolphins. little note, we also came up. Only one team, the Oakland Raiders in 75, ever won a division without a field goal of 40 or more yards. George Blanda's waning years. Second and six. Nathan. Nathan works to about the 38-yard line. It'll be third down and about four, and that will put the Dolphins again in the pass situation. And that's what the Cowboys certainly wanted to do. They read about a third and two or three a while ago when they completed it 17-yarder to uh, Duper. But this one's for sure a fast down, yeah. so maybe Dallas will throw a different rush out. When you think of the Dolphins have been an explosive offense, and they are, but thus far this has been a real championship drive. May in here, though. It's closer to five yards. They marked it at the 39. 2.45 and the clock is moving. That remains in the game, and the Cowboys show blitz. And they bring it. <laughs> Goodbye. Clayton. His 17th touchdown of the season. A 39-yard reception. He ties the record of Don Hudson. Set in 42. Elway Hirsch in 51. And Bill Groman in 61. And more than that, he puts the Dolphins on top. Once again, the 231 remaining in the game. Hear this crowd. You live by the blitz, you die by the blitz. Ron Fellows made a good effort. A lesser arm and that ball would have never gotten there. You are right. And that pass also puts Dan Marino over 5,000 yards for the single season. Incredible. Vaughn Shaman, perhaps breathing a sigh of relief. <laughs> but he can tie it up with a conversion. As he did earlier, and now he has put the Dolphins a touchdown and a conversion on top. Mark Clayton, what a year you're having. It may be in the shadow of Dan Marino, but you two have been remarkable. And it, you're going to see a great blitz here. And it's a guy up in his face down. As I said, a lesser arm and that ball would have never gotten there. And had to be right there, too, didn't it? Fellows was looking interception. We've seen some unbelievable individual moves tonight. Remember, Marino has downs in his face. Fellows looking for the interception probably could not believe Marino could throw it that accurately. I tell you, Mark Clayton, they love you in New York, kid. To go there right when the season's over. Eighth round pick out of Louisville. <laughs> They give him a ticker tape for Reed. Take Marino with him. They're giving part of the city. Not over. 231 remaining in the game. The Cowboys have battled particularly well on defense tonight. L.A. likes him, too. That was another third down situation the Dolphins hit on there. That's two big third down situations where they made the game. One of them for the touchdown. Give them a lot of credit. Those guys are good. Staring playoff elimination right in the face. Deep, Gary Allen, Chuck McSwain, Von Chaman, kicking with the prevailing breeze. Gary Allen will bring it out. Allen, out over the 20 to the 22, where Jim Jensen, a multi-purpose quarterback, <laughs> Trots out onto the field. Well, this drive will tell us that the Cowboys deserve to be in the playoffs. That's it. Jensen is really something. He fought passes earlier in the year. That time he hustled down there in the special team. He's run the ball. He has thrown the only touchdown pass other than Dan Marino. Dolphin fans are back into it. They were stunned when the Cowboys brought it even at 14. Dallas's ball at their own 22, first and 10. Dorsett. 
Good and Dorsett thinking. will have the first down at the 34-yard line. We'll pause four seconds and allow our stations to identify themselves. Channel 10, WPLG, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. Cowboys will probably not get this playoff before the two-minute warning. They do not. We have the two-minute warning with the Cowboys at first and 10. The ball at their own 34-yard line. The Cowboys with three timeouts remaining in the game. Two minutes for possible playoff elimination. Two minutes remaining in the game. The Dallas Cowboys with the football at the 35-yard line, or just shy of that at the 34. They have a first down and 10. They have three timeouts remaining. They have struggled all night offensively. They have fought valiantly defensively, as they had over the have over the past three weeks. But the Miami defense has also reappeared tonight. Perhaps the lack of efficiency on the part of the Dallas offense could be more of a credit to the defense of Miami. First and ten. Danny White fires. Oh! Oh! oh, oh I can't it. It. Was he in bounds? <laughs> That's another Franco Harris move. On the sidelines, Tony Hill. And I've seen a what a stunning completion hill uh -huh. not the intended receiver oh the referees call it back arms, and they are going to bring it back i believe and that call a courageous one by the official he called it real late his flag is on about the 25 yard line 27 yard line much further downfield than the reception was made he's in trouble dick creed is the official the side judge he was right there in position to see what transpired. We think. A stunning situation. At number 61, that's Dick Creed. He's the side judge. He'll try to work it out with Pat Haggerty. <laughs> and here is referee Pat Haggerty. Uh, the ball was tipped. The player came back in the barn legally and caught the ball for a touchdown. All right. In bounds, 66 yard touchdown. Well, the official obviously didn't see the tip, he just knew the player is not allowed to go out of bounds and come in and catch the ball. Let's take a look. Intended receiver was, I can assure you, not Tony Hill. And here's the tip, and tip. here, right there. Oh, is there. that amazing? <laughs> Tony James, was just standing there. James Jones was the intended receiver. The ball. Tipped away, and there goes Tony Hill, and we are a conversion point away from a tie ball game. You know, they were playing a zone, and I can't understand how Tony could have gotten knocked out of bounds before that time. Well, he's back inbounds, and we're going <laughs> for another tie. Raphael Septian to tie it up. again with 147 remaining in the game and giant players fans staff i hope you didn't leave early <laughs> <laughs> let's see them both again intended receivers james, james jones, jones. out of the way the ball was actually thrown behind james not a good throw it was tipped Don McNeil by tipped McNeil, it. and he says, oh, gosh, I should have had it. <laughs> Look what I found. And McNeil's not even looking behind him, and there's Tony Hill that's got the ball. There's on the 50-yard line, standing right there, number 80, catches the ball clean. That and is. just stay in bounds, Tony, just stay in bounds. Why, why wouldn't he come to the middle of the field? <laughs> Don't make me nervous, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't believe that. 147 remaining. The Dolphins have three timeouts. Tony Hill, Cowboy. he has made so many big plays over the years. Missed the first five games this season. Injured shoulder in our game earlier. Second game of the season against the Rams. The crowd noise in here is unbelievable. It's like a buzz. Everybody's saying probably the same thing. Can you believe that yeah. or what happened? And for Danny White, it goes in this book as a long completion. <laughs> <laughs> what an assist. Joe Carter is back, stepped in to kick it off. The Dolphins have three timeouts. Somebody likes them. Picked up there by Fulton Walker, another Kozlowski. Kozlowski moves it up to good field position, 29 yard line. There was now comes Dan Marino and company. Say, all right, guys. 
Marino heading for another 300 yard game. And how many times have you seen the Cowboys do this? Not many times this year. Yes. That's right. <laughs> Enough to be here with it. Uh, well, if you something think at stake down the line, should they go on to win? I think down the line you won't be looking back at this play as they move through the playoffs if they should do so. So well, many things. The way their defense is playing, they could be tough in the playoffs. How about the 21 points they scored against New Orleans in the fourth quarter? First down and 10. Again, the Dolphins can strike so quickly and so suddenly from anywhere on the field. Comes Randy White. Green and eight. Oh, my gosh. And Bill Bates. There will be about a yard loss on that play. Great combination of Randy White. They've lived by that through the season. And then Bill Bates, this man, a free agent from Tennessee a year ago. Second and 11. Taken down, Bill Bates again, short of the first down. It'll be third down and a long two. Not off once your again, Von Schaumann is back in the barrel. Big third down is going to be up to Bates or Dickinson to try to keep him from running that pattern over the middle. Third and three, and Clayton is wide open. And he's gone. And there he's he gone. gone. Do you believe it? They can't strike from anywhere. <laughs> and it's almost. The defensive line is stunned. And the explosive offense we've waited for and waited for, we have seen in the last few minutes. It's only almost incidental. Marino has just broken Faust's record for completions. He now has 362, the old Faust mark of 360, and I don't believe Tom Landry believes it. I'm not quite sure Shula does. I don't think I do. 51 seconds remaining. It's still not over. And it was still third down. Another third down. And the, the Giants can pack their bags once again. <laughs> the most popular man in New York and L.A. right now is Mark Clayton. His 18th touchdown. That broke the record he had tied earlier, set by Don Hudson in 42. Hirsch, Elroy Hirsch in 51. And Bill Groman of the Houston Oilers in 61. Sounds like the old Houston song. Von Shaman, again, has taken a deep breath. What a tremendous year for Mark Clayton. 18 touchdown receptions. Von Shaman makes it 28-21. 51 seconds remaining in the game. The Cowboys have three timeouts. Well, Clayton, you, I wouldn't go to Denver and ski if I was you. <laughs> you think he can believe it? An eighth-round draft pick a year ago. They used him running punch back. He only caught six passes all last year. Good blocking right there. They gave him plenty of time. Third down and about four or five. And he just got into the inside again. You're right. That middle, they're long gone. Here's his route. He was... I thought they would play him inside out and do anything but let these guys get them. Well, you can see he improvised. He ran his. This is. No, that's not no, it. <laughs> uh, we had a little mess up there. Played now on the night, four receptions, 150 yards, three touchdowns. He came in tonight with 15. So far, he has 18. More than that, he came in with 69 receptions. That was a new Dolphin record. 73 receptions on the year. That's a new Dolphin record. Mark Duper had four of the night for 55 yards. He was open on that play, too. Yeah, he was. He was. <laughs> Ron Shaman to put it in play. And there is still hope in the hearts of the Cowboys, although it's faded to a glimmer. 18 touchdowns by a receiver. Oh. what they set out to do tonight and we'll take now a look we apologize for that replay a moment ago this is Clayton 
The off lame inside out. Don't let him get in any inside. And you can see Michael Downs took a bad angle to the ball. That was number 26. And that allowed him to score, really. Again, that great speed. And Marino again over 300 yards. 23 of 40. 350 yards. Four touchdowns. A couple of interceptions. He just has exploded here in the fourth quarter. shaking because the stands were actually shaking that severely. On first down. Newsom. Gain of six. It'll be second and four. And we'll see the hurry up offense. 30 seconds remaining. They don't believe in calling those timeouts. Look out. And it's picked off. That's Don McNeil. McNeil. To the 20-yard line. That was Glenn Blackwood who tipped it into the arms of Don McNeil. Zip up the bags in, the, in New York. They're heading to L.A. Yep. <laughs> and it looks as though the Giants will play in Los Angeles in the NFC Wild Card next Sunday, and the AFC Wild Card game will be moved to Saturday. With the Raiders at Seattle. Dallas, of course, if they go on to lose, as it appears they will, they're eliminated. And they're out of the playoffs for the first time since 1974, ending the Cowboys' record run of nine, nine straight playoff seasons. The Dolphins, by the way, will be the home team not only in their first playoff game on December the 29th, but also in the AFC Championship game on January the 6th, should they get that far. And it's too bad they couldn't have played the Cowboys, that is, like this all season long. But if they had, they'd be in the playoff. Cowboys kind of had a, I think they had to come to terms after the Buffalo game. And they either were going to play or they weren't. And I think it's a pretty good sign maybe for next year because they got it together after the Buffalo game. Went up there and was supposed to win. Didn't, of course. Well, after losing to that Buffalo team, you had to do something. That's it. Dan right. Marino, congratulations. Little drop on the ball. The final seconds will tick off. The Cowboys have three timeouts remaining. Tom Landry, a lot of class, waves to Don Shula. The second and third winning as coach is in the history of the NFL. They are now separated after Landry's 25 years, after Shula's 22 years by only three victories, three overall victories. And this young man, what a future. I said it at the top of the show. He could very well in years to come turn the NFL record book for passing into his own personal biography. And Mark Clayton, you're not far behind. Three, yes, three. <laughs> the Dolphins over the Cowboys 28 to 21. Let's look at it one more time. Dan Marino at his very finest. Mark Clayton. Look at that offensive line work for him in there Frank. They've done it all year. They really have. He was sacked twice tonight but only 12 times into tonight and look at this young man. And he's looking both sides and saying the sailing is clear <laughs> from here. I'm coming the, on home. The record is mine is what he's saying. 18. <laughs> For the season, quite possibly avoided a trip to Denver January the 6th. Tom Landry broke a string of nine consecutive years in the playoffs. I got a good feeling he'll be back next year with it, though. He's coming back to coach. He's got maybe more determination and reason than he would have had otherwise. This ABC Sports exclusive has been brought to you by Light Beer from Miller. Everything you've always wanted in a beer and less. And by Chevrolet, who invites you to see today's Chevy. Drive today's Chevy. Live today's Chevy. And by IBM and the growing family of IBM personal.